Welcome back guys hope you're all doing great and today in this course we are going to learn how to create this nice full stack food delivery application by using react firebase and framer motion for animation and uh, we are going to learn all the advanced tips and tricks by using react.js and firebase integrations and all those things and uh, now allow me to explain what we are going to learn and develop in this project and if you have a look at it, it's having this nice UI design, which is nicely done by using Tailwind CSS and by React UI component and uh, React components. Okay. And in the home section, we're having this nice button and this text over here. And mainly the most attractive, this static data, what we are presenting over here. And right after that, if you're scrolling down, you can see this, we having this nice uh, card design, which providing only the fruits details over here, where the user can purchase the fruits informations and everything and this is horizontal scrolling user can scroll horizontally to fetch the information and this button which is nicely done to trigger the animation if you are having anything uh, any more details over there it will helps you to scroll horizontally much more smoothly and effectively and if you scroll down over here you can see that we're having this hot dishes over here by default when i refresh this page it's loading the uh the chicken information over here right it's loading the chicken detail by default it will filter the chicken information and i can change the uh i can filter the record and even if i click fish and that will show the fish detail over here and if i click fruits you can see that it's showing the fruits and it's having this nice hover animations and all those things and it's also having this user authentication user can log in to their account just by using uh, their gmail and initially it's logged into my account and only for my account i can add the uh, on, uh, add the new item because my email account is the admin account okay and in the same cases if i click this add to cart that will be added to the cart if i click again that item will be added to the cart over there if i click this you can see that we're having these two different items which we added previously and it's showing the total of the uh, total of those products and everything if i click this that total will be updated and if i'm clicking again if i click this again that product will be removed if i click this that item the cart is completely empty and it's showing this nice svg over there if i'm adding it again it will be added up over here if i click this that will be cleared again and this website is sharing the information throughout the components by using the context provider and redux reducers we are using the reducers to share the information to the throughout the components and that's how we are fetching the information whenever we needed it and okay so where is that uh just a moment and it's completely encrypted so the user can't see the information over here and yeah, but the main thing what I'm trying to say is, and uh, this thing is completely sharing the information throughout the component. It's by using the React Redux uh, reducers, and that's how we are fetching the details and much more faster. And now let's go ahead and click add new item. And that gives you this nice UI form over here. If I click here and I can add any title and let's say uh, ice cream and let's say vanilla ice creams ice creams okay and then let me choose the ice cream category if i click this and i can choose any ice creams for over here for instance i'll choose this one click ok and now currently that image is getting uploaded to our firebase server it's getting uploaded it's loading it's having this nice loading animation once it's uploaded it will gives you this nice alert message and it will display that image over here and you can give the calories information and the price information once you click save that will provide you this message data is uploaded successfully to your server and within a second it will be removed and if you go back to your section card section and if you click ice creams and that ice cream will be added up to your list instantly so these is uh, these are nicely done by using your create uh, that uh, react redux reduces okay and let's see how responsive this website is this website is completely responsive if you scroll up this is how it looks in the my mobile screen and this is the home screen and you can see that it's having this nice horizontal scrolling and all those things and this is our 
audacious filtering options user can filter over here and if i click chicken and that card will be filtered over here and if i'm clicking this add card item that will be added up over there again that will be added if i click this that will brings the cart icon over here so that we can remove it and it's completely remove the cart is completely empty and the user can this is how the mobile menu will looks in for the uh, user okay this a new item will not be displayed for all the other user only for the admin which is for myself in my email account and if i click this logout the user will be logged out successfully so i hope you guys are excited if you or feeling excited i don't want to waste your time and now without wasting your time let's get started okay then so now let's open up our terminal or command prompt so i already navigated to my desired folder location so navigate yourself to your desired folder location so here I'm just going to create a react app. So I'm using yawn. So if you're using uh, npx or npm, so that's fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, and wherever the term I'm using yawn install or yawn add, you just need to type npm install. That's fine. So in this case, I'm just going to add yawn create. create react app and i'm going to create the react app in this current directory itself so i'm just using restaurant app so in this directory itself i'm going to create that application so yawn create react app so hit enter so that will start installing the create application so this might take a while so what do you need to do in the meanwhile let's open up and go to the firebase firebase.google.com so let's initialize our firebase project because most of the activities we are going to do with the firebase only so let's create a project over here and let's say restaurant app. restaurant app. okay fine that's good so in any cases if you wish to enable the google analytics enable it in this case i'm just going to disable it create the project and this will create the project and let's open up the tailwind documentation also tailwind css because we are going to use the tailwind css for ui customization and this is a quite awesome guys you should uh, if you not uh, use the tailwind css before it's absolutely fine anyway i'm going to show you how to configure and how to use all those utilities classes in the in this project okay so no worries and here we go so our project is created now let's click continue so first of all what we need to do is we need to enable few of the things so we need to enable the firestore database so hit firestore database and we need to enable the real-time database storage and as well as the authentication so here when you enable the firebase uh, database or firestore database you can see that it's having two different modes production mode and test mode if you open it in the test mode it will gives you all the permissions for 30 days after that it will be blocked again you need to enable and everything in this case i'm just going to open the open it in the production mode and i'm going to customize the few uh, security details and all those things not that much for the tutorial uh, i'm just going to create a slight changes for that so i'm using the default location itself so enable uh, in case if you wish to change it to your nearby location you can do that but it will take a little bit time to connect it and then to enable it so please be patient until it's get done okay so it's now setting up the security rules once it's done we'll update it and let's we see where we are still it's installing okay so here we go and click the rules over here and by default the read and write permission over here is false so for initially we'll just change it to true and click publish then only it will gives you the permissions to in, uh, to write your details into the file store okay so this is done and now let's go to the real time database over here and let's do the same thing for create for our real time database too in any cases if you wish to use the real time database also you can use it that's why we are initializing the both in the first step itself so go to the rules and read i'm just going to keep it as a false and write i'm going to make it true 
say the changes it's done and let's go to the storage as well because we need to upload the images and all those things good and here I'm just going to create a new folder called images image oh my god my bad spelling mistake images okay i capital i'm using so i used to categorize it and whenever i'm using storage anywhere so i'm just creating a new folder called images cool then go to the rules over here let's change this to true okay good and now what we need to do is let's go up and click here your project settings currently we don't have any application so we need to create a web app so click here and create a new web app for our project firebase project so restaurant app i'm using the same one we'll leave this later we'll worry about it later so restaurant app so this will initialize your app and all those things we need to install this firebase in our project let's go back to the console and please be make sure that you're having database url and project id and storage bucket these three are really important for us okay cool now we are done with our firebase project let's open up here still our project is in it's running i hope it's going to be finished in a minute and once it's done will move on okay guys so here we go so now uh, our react app is successfully created so let's what we need to do is open it in the visual studio code so let me open it in my visual studio code i'm using the visual studio code editor you can you're free to use whatever the visual studio, whatever the editor you love to use so i am using visual studio code editor okay fine let's go then here we go so we what are the files we having we having the source and all those things anyway these are the um, boilerplate codes of react app in uh, as usual we will delete everything and we will uh, do everything from the scratch okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete everything completely and i'm going to create everything from the ground so let me delete this completely mm -hmm. source folder delete it and let's create a new file new folder over here called src inside the src i'm going to create index.js and one more file index.css okay in the index.js file what i'm going to do um, let's import the react import react from react and import react dom from react dom okay and we are going to import our index.js index.css so dot slash index dot css okay and as after this what we are going to do is i'm going to bring up the app our main app so import app from dot slash app absolutely we not yet created this app so let's go ahead and create the app over here app.js and RAFC. So I'm going. To, I'm using this uh, snippets ES7 React snippets. So this is really help you helpful whenever you're working with React projects. It uh, helps you to write the code much faster. So this will create a React arrow function component and it export it by default. Okay, so it's done. And if you want to install that plugin, what you need to do go to your extension and search for ES. 7 react redirects you can find this snippet install it and install one more thing that's your tailwind uh, intelligence you need to install the tailwind intelligence also because we are using uh, tailwind for our custom properties and all those things and this will really helps you to provide the suggestions of their utility classes okay good then what we need to do is let's go back to the index and after here now i need to render my react dom so let's say react dom dot render and open it inside here what we are going to do is we need to give two important things one first we need to render our app and where we need to render we need to render it in the document dot get element by id and that id is coming from the root 
okay so where, where this is file this if you open up your index.html file you can see it's having lots of codes over here and this is that particular id so our entire app component is going to mount to this particular id over here so now let me clean up this code a little bit i don't want this comments clean it remove it cool so keep it simple that's fine now our index.html is pretty much done close it imagine it so app.js is done let's go back to our app.js over here so let's fire it up and make sure everything is working fine so press ctrl j to open up your terminal cls to clear the screen and i'm just running yarn start so if you're using yarn better use always yarn don't mix the package with yarn and npm yarn is like uh, the advanced versions of the npm whatever the drawbacks we are facing in npm yarn fulfills all those drawbacks that's why i'm using the yarn okay and it's firing up let's see we are getting if if we are getting any error or not currently there is no error no issues and look at that our app is triggered and it's successfully loaded over here so now what we need to do is we need to configure the tailwind css with our react app which we are having over here so let me minimize it and let's go back here let's go back to the browser and we already opened the tailwind css uh, documentation and search for react app so Tailwind CSS provided a nice documentation for uh, creating a as for integrating the Tailwind CSS with your React project. And over here, you can see that we already created the project and we successfully done few steps over there. So let's copy this line. I'm not using NPM. We are using Yarn. So let me go to our terminal and let me create a new terminal. CLS yarn add in this case you need to type npm install oops I don't need to type install you need to type npm install if you are using npm I'm using yarn so I'm just typing yarn add so this will install that necessary package to our application so it's installing it's going to be done yep it's done then let's go back here and copy this particular line and then type yarn that line yarn tailwind that will initialize the tailwind config and post config.css cool right so then what we need to do is let's go back to our application and we need to add this line in our tailwind config.js open the tailwind config.js replace this content which you copied from there done then what we need to do we need to add this line to our index.js copy this line and let's go back to our index.js and index.css and here i'm going to you i'm going to import a uh, font first so uh, let me import that font google google insert at import i'm using the font opens cool okay so then what we need to do is we need to add few codes over here so star let's remove all the margin unwanted margin margin padding zero and box sizing for box as well as the body tag body tag it's going to use the font family as poppins and if the poppins is not loaded sans serif and as well as use the apple system font size and everything over here so this is the font which we needed it's pretty much done then i'm going to add for html and for the body tag and i need the smooth behavior scroll behavior should be smooth so i'm just adding the smooth so if you not add this line so if your transition if you if you're adding any transition effect from top, if you're moving up and down your website will not have a smooth transition it will appear suddenly so to avoid that we are using the scroll behavior as smooth okay so after here we need to paste that tailwind that the uh, utilities properties and all those things we copied from our tailwind documentation cool right so let's save the changes over here and let's stop our server and rerun it because we 
added to configuration file whenever you added any config or anything it's better stop it and rerun it okay so let's see whether there is any issue or not in our no we didn't get any issue and it's loaded font is changed and let's check whether our tailwind is working fine or not let's go back to the app.js and i'm going to add few styles over here so let's say with screen so this is what i'm talking about this is the tailwind css utility classes that's why we install the tailwind intelligent uh, that excel intelligent uh, extension so this will help you to um, write the tailwind css much faster so with screen and height as well as the screen and make the flex and item center justify center and the color is going to be sorry text color is going to be blue 600 let's make sure look at that so tailwind is working absolutely fine so our app is up and running now so next let's go ahead and create the header component okay then so before jumping into the header component so first let's install all the necessary packages which is needed for our uh, project so let's open up our terminal and let me go to the another terminal over here and here first uh, let's let's add all the necessary packages and let's set up our main router navigation after that let's move on to our header component design okay so first of all i'm going to add yawn add and what is the package first absolutely firebase we are using firebase so let's add the firebase and i'm using framer motion framer motion for animation uh, for simple simple animation purposes and uh, after that we need to add react icons so most of the icons i'm using is the react icons so i'm using react icons then we need the react router dom react router dom and i think we are pretty much done i think so firebase we added framer motions react icons and react router dom that's it so press enter and that will add all the necessary packages for us so it's, it's importing the firebase now and uh, this might take a while and let's me wait until it's get done okay so please be please wait until it's get done okay then so finally my packages everything is uh, successfully installed so next what we need to do is so let's create a new folder over here called components okay inside the components i'm going to create a new file called header dot jsx okay and i'm going to create a new file over here for index.js and let's go back to the uh, components index this we don't need and this we don't need for now close it okay so here rafce and then let me export that so export default So export default as home um, dot slash header. Sorry, not home header. Save the changes. And let's go ahead and import our header component in our um, app app.js. Okay, so before moving into the like um, app over here so i'm going to make few customization in the app styles so let's say i don't need this the width is actually absolutely it's going to be screen and height it's going to be auto flex flex color okay item center justify uh for the time being I don't need these things I think so okay we'll remove it and let's import the header from our components so actually why we are using the index.js over here and I'm writing all the export like um, that uh, packages or inside here it's because 
later in some cases we need to add multiple import statements for different different components so that will add constantly a huge import over there so to avoid that we are importing everything as an object from the components folder so that index.js will handle all those imports and everything okay so let's save the changes and this should bring up our i think ah here we go so our header is loaded over here successfully so then let's go back to our uh header.jsx then what we need to do is we need to set up our router main router so let's go ahead and set up our router let's go to the index.js in the index.js so we are going to import a few different packages from the react router dom so let's import that import browser router we are going to import it as router not as a very big name a router okay so inside this let me cut it completely uh, all what we can do is enter enter over here and enter over here so let's import the router so keep it at the top level component so that you don't need to um every time uh, worry about the main router so router should be at the top level of your app component so app component everything is inside the app component so we'll keep the app component completely inside our router that's good so then what we need to do is uh, we can go we can um, navigate to different different pages and all those things so that will be done nicely so later i'll show you what we need to do on all those things so first let's go back to our header.jsx and let's start designing our header.jsx so in the header like what we are going to do is we are going to bring uh, different styles so let me open my header.js over here so first it's going to be class name and this is going to use the width full probably not full width is going to use the complete screen and this is going to be in the fixed position always at the top so let's say fix it it should be in the fixed position and it should be always top of all the elements z index 50 okay then what we need to do is um we can say uh, for the time being i'm just giving a different color now so that we can see how it's looking and all those things and i'm going to add padding six for the time being let's minimize it and this is how our header is looking now so that's pretty much good padding six it's working nice over here and still what we need to do is we need some space in the left side so let's say px 16 in the x and y axis alone i think this space is more than enough in the left and right side cool okay so then what we can do inside here delete. let's bring up over here so we need to have two different uh, menu options one is for our uh, mobile and another one is for our um, our uh, main uh, desktop and tablets and all those things okay so let's fix <coughs> that first mm, what we need to do is uh, we'll create two divisions do and this is going to be for our uh, desktop and tablet and this is going to be for our <coughs> mobile do okay so we'll keep it as it is okay so here class name and uh, this it's need to be and class name and this it's need to be block display block but this needs to be <coughs> hidden md from the medium device it should be hidden apart from that we'll make it as flex display flex for mobile for uh, desktop this division is going to be hidden normally for small uh, from the small device it's going to be hidden but from the medium device it's going to be flex okay so i'll show you width let's see i'll show you width full and bg i'm just going to keep um red 
okay for uh, mobile view i'm going to change the color width as bg blue so you can understand how it's working let's see and then let's add some padding mm, height full height full see the changes let's see nothing is happening okay so let me add some padding p4 p4 okay so now you can see that it, this color changes over here and let me change this to mobile view now so inspect and look at that so it's changed so when it comes to mobile screen it looks like this when when it comes to medium screen it will change but actually you can see that medium screen it's not starting from 760 pixels by default so we can change that customizations and all those things that will add a little bit customizations in our uh, um, tailwind but you can see that our mobile rest breakpoints it's completely working fine okay so that division we created it's absolutely fine it's created now so let's go back here and now what we need to do is uh, i'm just going to copy and paste the tailwind uh, configurations whatever i created okay so you can download it from the description and copy and paste over here this is these are just uh, static contents so in any cases if i'm copying and some content over here they are just like static content so you don't need to worry about uh, that much and most of the code i will explain briefly okay so here we need to extend that our tailwind configurations height and width that's done so height and width is uh, we added height and width and minimum width and everything and we need to add the screen properties also let's so let me add the screen properties so after here screens and let me bring the colors also the colors whatever we are going to use so colors colon paste the colors let's come on so these are all our custom properties so you can see that our small screen <coughs> until 640 pixels it's small screen until 642 70, 768 it's going to be um, you can see that uh, like 768 it's going to be our medium and until 124 it's large until 128 is excel after beyond that it's going to be to excel okay so our screens and everything is pretty much done good so let's go back to our header.jsx okay so i'm just going to remove this and remove this we don't need the padding adding remove all those things okay so let's fix the um mobile screen now so we need the uh header logo and all those things so i'm going i'm already having that asset over here asset so these are the assets we are going to use it for our website and i given this asset link in the description also you can download it from there okay so let's go ahead and do all the setups so download it and copy it inside our project folder structure there it is so let me create and bring it and paste it inside our source folder okay so now i'm having all the images whatever i need it's everything inside here and next let's start designing our header component okay then so now let's start creating our header component so what we need to do is uh, let's minimize it and i'll i i'm going to copy this asset folder images folder inside this images folder i'm having all the necessary images needed for this project i given this uh, link in the description so is that you can download it and copy and paste it inside our components folder over here that's it so then uh, let's bring up our logo so we need to display our logo and we need to display the menus everything over here so let's do that and what we need to do is inside here i don't need this background color anymore so let me delete it and i am having a logo over here so this is the logo i'm using okay so let me import that logo from there import as logo from dot double dot slash 
dot slash image slash uh, what's the file name logo dot png and inside here I'm going to create our add division and div and that div is going to be class oops class name flex and that is going to be item center and it's going to use the the space between two it's going to be gap two or three uh let's see gap two and then uh we'll load that image and this is going to be logo and the source we are going to load the logo and the styles i'm going to use class name is going to be with thin object cover save the changes and let me bring the browser and here we go so logo is loaded successfully and after that i need to have uh, have the text we need to bring that text so let's bring that paragraph over here and this is going to be text heading color text heading color and the text excel and font bold and the name is going to be city and i think we need to reduce the logo picture still a little bit eight i think that a pretty much good now okay so this is enough and now let's bring the um that menu everything so let's say you will and inside this li i'm just going to say home let me copy it and paste it and second it's going to be menu and third it's going to be this and then um you can see uh what's that okay i think this is pretty much done or we can have one more menu one more menu is going to be service okay cool save the changes and let's see this is looking like this so let's change this class name it's going to be and what we can uh, do is actually instead of having it as a division we can change this name as a header because anyway it's a header component right so change this to header okay so use the proper tag so that's why it will promote your uh, website automatically when it comes to seo uh, search engine optimizations this will really help you whenever you're working I actually i forgot at the initial stage itself okay so now it's working fine we change this to header good and we'll add these styles for flex over here flex done and items everything should be center and the gap between each and everything should be uh 32 pixel 8 okay this is pretty much good now what we need to do is this should be in the this corner complete this corner so what we can do is um we can push this so margin left auto so that will push completely to the right side good so let's write these styles for these li tags so class name it's going to be text text base so actually i just hold alt key and click all the li tag then i'm typing it okay so this is what i did if you hold your hold your alt key and click here 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 and then type class name text base that means 16 pixel then text uh we can say heading color and then cursor pointer or instead of this heading color we can say text text color or over we can say text heading color duration and then transition all and after that ease in ease out say the change these are all the styles we added for our this one 
it's looking good and why okay here margin auto that's a mistake okay so it changes and now everything is over here that's looking perfect then what we need to do is we need to bring the uh, cart icon cart 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 icon so let's say react icons bring the react icons search for react icons and let's search for the icons let's go to the material design icon and i'll search for basket 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 that is i couldn't find it yeah here it is md shopping basket this is the basket we have icon we are going to use it okay so after this ul tag we are going to have one more division and this division is going to be uh, flex okay and actually we don't need flex this is going to be a relative that's all it's enough for this and inside here i'm going to bring that shopping basket and intelligence is not detecting okay let's import it import from react icons slash mg so that should load our icons over here so it's loading perfectly but why it's over there at the top mm, why 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 it is not supposed to be there okay so we should use the flex then so flex item center justify center that should bring it in the center line and let's now add some styles for your class okay wait a second let me have a look at it okay so let me bring it over here so class its text color is going to be text color itself same text color text size is going to be 2x let's see how it looks okay and then uh, from the margin left margin left uh, we need some space so 28 pixels or 32 pixels okay this is good okay so this is good nice then what we can do is mm, over here mm, 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 mm. Mm, we need to change this to cursor pointer and after this i'm going to have one more division class name class name it's going to be width 10 height 10 and rounded 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 Full. okay and then um, BG it's going to be cart BG color so this is the color which we already added in detail when config over here this is the color okay and inside here I'm going to have a paragraph tag that's simply going to say a number over here and for this class name it's going to be text xm sm and text white and font semi bold font semi bold save changes and let's see actually that's a very big circle we don't need that much with 2 2 2 2 2 12 16 pixels uh that's pretty small and what we can say if if four is not enough then six or eight let's say eight oh come on eight eight is too much six so these are just trial and error guys you just need to adjust it until you get that perfect uh, circle and all those things I think five is more than enough. 
okay five i think so that's pretty much enough and i'll reduce this size to excess and let me bring it center so flex item center justify center so now you can see that number over there perfectly okay so but this should be an absolute position so what we can do is i will add the absolute position for this absolute top zero right zero over there it should move a little bit higher so let's say minus top we'll move it minus eight pixel and in the same way minus right eight pixels okay so this is pretty good now it's looking perfect now okay so we are done with the our um, uh, header section and next what we need to do is we need to uh, bring our um, we need to have our user avatar image over here because we need to have the login information also in that case if that is the case what we need to do is we need to um, we will bring image this is that division okay so instead of keeping this as margin auto okay so it's looking like this what we can do is for our header this is that overall header for this we can say item center justify um, between okay so this is looking like this mm. and what we have to do is mm -hmm 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 -hmm. better we will wrap all these things inside this cart division and this ul tag will wrap these both into a single division so cut it and we will wrap it inside a single division so then we will add some styles for this flex item center so that now you can see that this is both in the corner side so that we don't need to add unwanted margins and all those things even here we don't need the margin now because i will add the gap for this over here so let's say gap 8 so that will push the uh, menu a little bit further okay so in between this ul tag or cart after this cart after this cart section i need to bring our uh, user we need to bring our user like uh, that uh, avatar image we need to bring that uh, user image over there so what we can do for that is so just a moment okay so let's load the for that purpose only i'm having the avatar over here where it is where it is where it is where it is avatar over here this is the avatar we are going to load okay so let's go ahead and load that uh, particular image okay so first what we need to do is um let's load that image image source and this is the you can say user profile user profile and let's load that image first let's bring that image inside let me keep it over here import avatar from dot slash image slash what's the file name where it is avatar png avatar dot png so let me load it over here 
out of save the changes and it's loaded too much okay so let's write some styles class name equals width 10 and we will make some I mean what is the width for this 40 pixel okay minimum width should be also should be 40 pixel only so we are now manually writing this so minimum width is also it's going to be 40 pixels only and then uh, height also it's going to be 40 pixels same as minimum height also it's going to be 40 pixels save the changes okay so let's add some shadow effects for the shadow to excel so that is having that shadow over there now shadow is it shadow is really working because i'm not seeing any difference over there What is the problem? I think maybe because of if let me add some padding manually, wait, 20 pixel. Now still we can't see that shadow. Shadow, it's not showing why. So drop shadow Excel. Yeah, now I can see the shadow over there. Okay, shadow, it's not working. I'm not sure why the shadow is not working but drop shadow is working so now we can see that it's having some shadow over there okay but actually so I want to change the our main app background color so this for this app BG primary okay so this will refresh it is it changed really app where is our body tag division okay where uh, okay because of this position fixed we can't see anything so right after this header so let's bring our main tag and that's it's going to be class from the margin top uh, let's say that 24 from the margin top 24 and padding 8 or something and width it's going to be full and let's say main container of this save the changes and okay so this is the background color for our um, our primary container you can see that our app is changing that background color and all those things okay so that's fine it's working good okay so in this main instead of loading the main container like this what i'm going to do is we are going to set up the router because uh, we need to add the create item and all those things right so do we need to add some router informations to do that uh, we'll go to our index.js over here okay so what we need to do is i think i made a few changes so over here let me delete all these things and let's set up manually so we need to add the browser router import this package browser router as router from the react router dom then we need to wrap this component inside our router which we created now over here like this okay so router is our main it should be at the top level so that now we can navigate anywhere we want inside this i'm going to say route route so that's a route which is coming from our react router dom and route is also coming from there and this is a self-closing tag and path is going to be if anything come root anything any directory load this element um what is that element is going to be it's main 
container and if anything is coming through the url create item load create container okay so this is pretty much done now we need to create these two things let's collapse everything and inside here we need to create main container first dot jsx then we need to create what is this image folder oh this image should from source folder why i keep it there image should comes from source folder okay then we need to create this jsx rafce -E, and let's open the index.js and let's export them export default as main container from dot slash main container then export default as create container from dot slash create container save the changes and let's import over these things close this close this close this close this keep the only thing what we are working on so okay so import it import it so they are imported over here save the changes and let's go and check over here initially it's loading main container and if anything is coming through dot slash create item and that loads the create item container over here okay so this where we are showing where we are showing this create container and all those things when the user clicks here and this is for admin purpose only because we only the admin able to add the uh, items on all those things not the normal user so now we are pretty much done with our uh, router and all those things next let's move on to our user in the header we are going to customize this header section that's what we are going to do next okay then so now we are pretty much done with our uh, our uh, react router so our route everything is uh, it's good it's working fine if we go back here it's working good so it's changing to main container then here what we need to do is actually we need to do this one only we need to change our image user image profile image over there so let's go back to our header and for this uh, let me add one more style as a cursor pointer so if the user is not logged in it will use this particular image okay otherwise we need to bring the um we need to bring that uh, particular uh, user profile who logged in we need that user profile we need to bring it so what we need to do is so let me add some clickable animation for this first for animation i told you we installed a uh, framework motion so let's import that package import animate presence and as well as uh, we don't need motion over here so what i need to do is i need to wrap the entire app component uh, into the animate presence so let's see I'll paste it here and let me bring everything inside to the animate presence so initial like uh, what we need to do is uh, for this so this will make sure that uh, all the animations whatever we are going to do it's going to be presence inside this entire component so I don't want to import this in every single component. So I'm just wrapping it in our top level component. Then I'll go here and here I'll import that import motion from framer motion. And let's go to our image and let's add that motion over here, motion dot. Okay. And for this, I'm just going to do whenever I'm tapping while tap uh animate reduce the scale level to 0 0.6 or 0 0.6 or something let's see now if i click this look at that so that gives a nice animation with that twin and all those things everything is pretty much good right so that gives you the nice clickable event let's do the uh, same thing for this uh 
for the remaining thing if you wish to do for all those things you can do for uh, your entire section so but i'm good i'm not i'm not going to do anything so let's see this is enough okay so then what we can do is um okay so we need to add the link for our um, this one also for this division because when the user clicks this this it should take the user to the home page so instead of this division what i'm going to say i'm just going to keep it as a link from the react router dom react router dom when the user clicks this it should takes the user to um user to where it should take the user it should take the user to slash when the user clicks so now it will take the user to okay so now that link is working okay fine so then what we have to do is we will move on to our authentication so for authentication i told you we created the firebase so now what we need to do is we need to create the environment variable env environment variable so let's create one by one environment variable let's go ahead and let's copy this and let's go here and inside our root directory let's create a new file called dot env and let's make sure that we added that dot env inside our git ignore also because we are not supposed to add this file in our github or anywhere okay so let me paste it over here perfect okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold my alt key click here 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 and i don't want here okay and so first let's remove all this comma because because of this comma i was i was uh, creating this before creating i was uh, i forgot to remove that comma because of that i was searching that mistake for a, quite a long time what is the mistake then we'll add the cursor multi cursor here 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 and here or not there here so let's delete everything and now this let's prefix everything with react app score firebase space equal okay react underscore app space equals and now what we need to do is here all these things this is going to be api underscore key it's showing like this dot env only right yeah but this time it's looking in a different color i'm not sure why it's in a different color okay we'll see and uh, underscore domain and underscore db url and underscore project id project id and this is going to be storage bucket storage bucket and this is your uh, messaging id this is app id save the changes okay so did we make any mistake over here nope i'm not i didn't make any mistake okay by default itself it's coming in that color only okay so now let's go ahead so what we need to do is we need to create a new file called firebase.config in our root directory firebase.config.js 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 let's go here and let's add some firebase configuration okay So let me push 
here what we need to do is inside this so first let's let's um, let us bring all these things so let me copy it and let me paste it over here anyway we will change everything so no worries and let me import all the necessary packages we're going to use it inside so get app it's not showing okay so let's import it from firebase slash app first we need to use get app and we need get apps get app and get apps method and also we need the initialize app these methods and let's import import get firestore it's not showing why come on firebase slash firestore now it will display firestore and let's import from we need the storage package also so firebase slash get storage oh sorry storage so here we need to add get storage so these but these are the packages we need and after that so cost app we need to initialize the app only if there is no app otherwise it will re initialize every single time whenever your page get refreshed so to avoid that we will get the apps list get apps if the get apps length if there is a length and that length is greater than zero then get that app information if there is no app initialize the new app initialize the new app with our firebase configs details okay so this is the proper way to initialize your firebase so then we need to get the db information get firestore db with our app then const storage get storage with the app and okay so now we are uh, pretty much uh, everything is done we get our db and what i'm going to say instead of db i'll just say i'll keep it firestore so that it will not confuse me okay then i need to export all these information first i need to export app then i need to export firestore then i need to export the storage all these things are now exported so now what we have to do is on click whenever i'm clicking that user image we need to do something right so that means whenever i'm clicking here this this image this particular section okay i need to do something so what i need to do i need to um uh when, I, when i'm clicking this i need to uh pop up i need to bring a pop up then i we need to log in we need to give the user login credentials so before to doing that need to wrap this into a division and i will keep it because inside this once the user logged in we need to give a drop up drop down menu and all those things so class say relative say the change okay so now for this i'm just going to add an on click event on click login and this login is absolutely not there let's go ahead and create all the login fonts login is equals that method and arrow six function okay so now we created that arrow six function so before going to login and all those things in authentication we need to enable what kind of um, authentication we are going to use so go back to your for firebase uh, application and in this case we are going to use the google authentication only so click the google authentication enable it click here and choose your email address and click save so that will provide and that will enable the google authentication provider and now we can access our google authentication and it will provide you this web client id and web secret client id if you need you can copy it and paste it in your environment variable in this scenario i'm not going to use that so let's leave it as it is okay so user is currently empty and sign in method it's everything is enabled 
and let's go back so far there is no error let's go back here in the login now what i need to do is and i'm going to get the response okay so we are going to use the sign in with pop-up so let's go back to the firebase and if you click the go to docs over here if you search for sign in with pop-up sign in with pop-up because Google uh, Firebase provides you a uh, lots of sign-in options. In this case, we are going to use the Google sign-in and we are going to sign in with pop-up animation. Sign in with pop-up where it is. If you scroll down, scroll down over here, you need to get the authentication. And over here, this is how you need to use your sign-in with pop-up option. Okay, so this is what we are going to do now. Okay, so whenever you're learning a new tech, better uh, follow their documentation that's really useful for you. So, okay, so now let's go back here, go back to our app and we need to import a few different, first we need to, as they mentioned over there, where it is, we need to get the auth, okay, and we need to import all these packages and everything. So let's import all this, all those packages and all those things. Let me copy this completely and right after here, let me import it. So get auth, sign in with pop-up, Google authentication provider. Okay. Then we need the app, our app. So app, which is our firebase.config, which is coming from there, app. Okay. Then what we need to do, uh, we need to initialize those things over here uh, const um, firebase auth const firebase auth is equal to get authentication of our app okay then that will gives you the authentication details and const provider we need to get, create a new provider so new google auth provider create a new instance for your google auth provider now inside the login uh, what i'm going to do is and const response we will get the response is equals await so this should wait until because if you see here they are uh, that that's returning a promise right so we need to get that promise so that should be wait until that we are receiving so that should be if you are using await then it should be an asynchronous function so change it to asynchronous function await sign in with pop-up sign in with pop-up and for this we need to supply the firebase authentication information and the provider information what we are having in our hand so for the time being i'm just going to console.log it console.log the response let's see whether everything is working fine or not go back here open the console we are getting an issue what is that issue oops firebase config it's outside of the source folder is it so yep it is in the outside of the folder so what we need to do is let me bring it into the source folder okay firebase in the config file should be inside the source folder now that issue is solved and we need to bring our app again so app now it's coming from our where it is i'll bring this over here keep it here and now that should not be any error look at that no no error if i click this what is it showing app is not defined oh i already defined everything is defined okay so that's an unwanted issue now it's showing the console if i click this it should print that response over here look at that we got our response so this is our response user information over here if you go back here and users you can see that signed in user over here okay so successfully it's uh, integrated so logged in is integrated and now we need to use this user information in everywhere okay so everywhere i need to use this user information i need to access this information so that's why we are going to use the um redux redux reducer we are going to use the redux reducer as a 
context provider for our entire component okay so that's what we are going to do next okay so now uh, we all got our details so let's go ahead and create the context provider so let's go to our visual studio code and inside the source folder i'm going to create a new folder called context and inside this context folder i'm going to create three different files first one is the state provider which is going to be our state provider then i'm going to create a reducer.js and i'm going to create one more file that is our initial state dot change so these are the three different files so let's go ahead go to our initial state in the initial state we are going to define all the initial stage of our uh, initial state of our user okay so what i'm going to do is let's say export const initial state initial state initial state spelling wrong initial state is equals it's an object so we are going to keep the user information over here okay initially user is going to be now user information is going to be now okay so then now what we need to do is in the uh, reducer let's go back to the reducer okay in the reducer we need to have few more informations and let's go back to the state provider in the state provider, this is our main supply this is where we are going to create our context information on all those things so let's create import react from react and as well as create use the create context then use context then use reducer these are the packages these are the hooks we need okay so let's import all those things export const state context this is the context we are creating because we are using state provider so state context you can name it whatever the name you want so create context i'm creating okay then i'm going to export it export const state provider export const state provider is equals is a function okay and that function is going to take uh, an object of parameter that is the reducer reducer as a parameter that we will pass this reducer over here reducer okay then initial state initial state and children that's our component children is our component initial state reducer and all those things okay initial state is coming from we will pass the initial state of this and reducer and children is our component okay good so what we need to do we need to wrap it our state context dot provider okay inside this i'm going to bring our children this provider information is going to have a value value prop and that value prop is going to use the use reducer because we are sending the reducer so it should use the use reducer hook to pass those information so pass this reducer with our initial state okay so now our state provider is done then we need to export this information export const use state value use state value we are creating our custom hook to update our state values so use context state context okay because every time you don't need to uh, import use context that particular context name so you don't need to use it like that you can directly use our use state value to dispatch and use all the child parameters inside it that's why i'm exporting here over here itself so save the changes so that is this is pretty much done so we created our custom hook and our state context provider is ready we are passing our objects as a reducer initial state and children this is our initial state and reducer which is coming from these files we will pass it from this file and the children is our component and let's go back to the reducer okay let's create the initial state export 
const not initial state action type what kind of action type you are going to do okay so for uh, whenever you are doing something we can do it by uh, by using the action type we can update the state by value by using the action type only so i'm using the action type so set user is the action type set user and the value was set user this is the object if i want to update the user information i will call this action type then i will dispatch the updated value to that action type so now what we actually is creating and we are creating a data layer that data layer will be at the top of our entire component so that will add that layer will be accessible for our all the child components so that you can access it whenever you need it from that data layer if there is any changes you are making we will push it again to the data layer so that we will have the updated information so by this way you don't need to pass the state information from one component to another in case if you're having multiple child components you need to you don't need to pass the state information to the entire child component so this is the best way to use the states and all those things okay so that's why we are using the the create context and all those things and now is the time to create the reducer const reducer is equals so this will take the state parameter and as well as the action what kind of action we are going to do and it's a function okay so if uh, let's say console.log what kind of action whenever the action is triggering we, we will see what kind of actions action is triggering later we will remove this console log switch action dot type so i will pass the action dot type whenever i'm dispatching i will pass a type okay through that type only i'm going to change the cases so case action type dot set user if the action type dot set user that means if the type whatever the type i'm sending if that is equals to set user then use this case okay if that is the case then return first we are going to return the state so whatever the state keep all the state as it is okay so we are spread using the spread operator we are uh, destructuring the, we, using the spread operator we are keeping the state value everything as it is and we are just updating only our user information through action i will get the user information i'm just updating that user information to our state okay so we are keeping all the state values as it is except the user values and the default case if nothing is then default by default okay return the state save the changes so now we need to export our reducer export by default the reducer so still this things is not usable because we need to wrap our state reducer in our complete top level where our app is get initialized so let's go to our index.js where is our index.js over here i need to wrap my app into the state provider so let's say state provider okay so if, along with the state provider this have the initial state prop initial state is going to be initial state itself initial state which is coming from context initial state then it's also having the reducer prop and that reducer is going to be reducer from context reducer okay so save the changes and it should not throws any error mm. it's showing error state provider is showing error why 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 state provider state provider we wrapped it over here inside the app component and everything is now done in the initial state initial state value we just having export cons initial state value that is just user it's null and inside the reducer we having the action type set user set user 
and cons producer taking the state and actual action and the switch action type return state user okay that's fine and export default reducer it's done then state provider here is there any mistakes uh, i'm just cross verifying it if there is any mistakes or not um, use reducer no mistakes is there export const state provider object Uh, actually that is a mistake what is that mistake this because this is not a function parameter so it should be a prop that should be component we are rendering the component that's the problem so instead of curly brackets use the normal brackets my mistake force of habit okay so that's why it's not allow it's not allowing you to render this state provider okay so this is not a curly bracket use the normal functional bracket so now it's get ready so how you can understand that our context provider is it's the top of that so you need to in import this uh, react component extension so go and install that extension and if you click that this is our app for the top level of app we'll be having our state provider okay and the initial state we having the initial state and we having the reducer function over here initially the user value is null look at that so now i can access this user value anywhere inside this component okay so this is how these are all the components which is linked under it and you can see that i can access this user value context provider in the context provider you're having the values and inside the values you're having the user and user it's so far now okay so now what we need to do is when the when we successfully logged in we need to push this information to our user we need to dispatch that information to that particular um, context provider so let's go ahead and do that okay so let's go back to our header.jsx in the header.jsx and once the successful logged in we are getting some response that response it's returning the entire thing let me show you one more time if i am logging in it's opening the pop-up and look at that it's providing the user token and all the informations so we need this user only user object so let me go ahead and destructure it user from the user i need two informations i'm going to destructure one more time that is our refresh to refresh token and as well as the provider data i need this provider data okay this object okay we will access okay so now we having that uh, user refresh token and the provider data all i have to do is what i need to do is i need to uh, dispatch this provider data to our contacts that our data layer so that's why we created this custom hook to do that so let's go ahead and import that so what i'm going to do is and right after over here array brackets use state value which is coming from our state provider our custom hook okay this is going to take an object that is our user object and it's going to have a function called dispatch okay this is an object and it's having a dispatch as a function okay which is coming from our use state value so now here after once the user successfully logged in we are going to dispatch it dispatch it with the type type is going to be action types dot set user we are setting the type as action type dot set user that means 
where from the action type this is the where is it reducer this is the action type and we are calling this object to set this value where and inside the reducer we are checking this if that is is equals to set user we are updating the user information so this is what happening okay so then user object is going to be uh, the value which we having provider data of zeroth index so if you have a look at it if you go here in the provider data it is an array okay so we are accessing the zeroth index and that's having all the user information so we are getting that and we are supplying it to our user state say the changes and let's create it let's run it one more time and look at that it's triggered set set to user and now you can see that that user information is displayed and if you want to confirm it one more time let's go ahead to the component of our top level and state provider initially the state value is null but once the context provider is triggered you can see that the value is having some value now user information so now our context provider is working exactly fine now next what we need to do is from this value i'm going to fetch the information and i'm going to display the information over here that's what we are going to do next okay then so now what we need to do is let's go back to our header.jsx and over here uh, we having now user information over here right so we having that user information so if there is an user we need to display the user photo url which is this one we need to use this photo url if there is no user then we need to display the avatar this avatar so to do that what i'm going to do is i'll cut it if there is an user then display user wait okay if there is an user display user information otherwise user avatar not the complete user information user photo url information user dot photo url if that is user print the user photo url otherwise print the avatar let's save the changes and that should display the our avatar over here look at that cool right so but the problem is image is not rounded so what we can do is we will make it rounded full save the changes and that is rounded now so it's pretty much done over here okay so let me refresh it and look at that this is the problem so whenever the page got refreshed your state value will be set back to the null because the initial state is null so whenever the page got refreshed the initial value will replace your context so what we need to do is either you need to save this information in the uh, lo local storage or in your session provider or your um, server okay so i don't want to trigger every single time to save it everything in the server okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to store it in the local storage because it's not going to cost that much memory space i'm going to store this in the local storage so to do that what i'm going to do is whenever the user successfully logged in once the successful dispatch what i'm going to do is i'm going to push that login user logged in user information to the local storage local storage dot set item and as well as user in the name of user so json dot converting as a json object stringify and I'm supplying the provider data zeroth index. So this will push the user information in the local storage. Let's verify it. Let's go here and click the application and let me clear this. Okay, currently nothing is over there because uh, it's, uh, it's showing me my practice information and all those things. Okay, so now if I click this, it's bringing up our pop-up and look at that. So now we having our, our local storage. Still, if I'm refreshing it, it's not working, but we having our local storage over here. So what I need to do is I need to update my state initial value. So initially what it's need in initially, 
instead of hard coding it to null i need to verify whenever the browser refresh check the local storage if that is user use it otherwise set it to null that's what we are going to do now to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new folder called utils inside the utils folder i'm going to write our support function to fetch all the local storage informations and all those things okay so let's go ahead and create a new folder in this right click your source folder and create a new file called utils to folder called utils inside the utils folder i'm going to create uh fetch local storage data dot js okay inside here i'm going to create a function export const fetch user is equals const user info is equals local storage dot get item of user if that user is not if that is not equals to undefined if that is not equals to undefined then fetch that information json dot pass fetch that information and pass it with the json object get item of user otherwise clear the local storage if that is that value fetch it if it is showing undefined simply clear it that's what we are going to do then we need to return that user input okay so now our file is ready now i'm going to use it in the initial state so what i'm going to do is right above here i'm going to create const user info is equals uh fetch user which is coming from our local storage which we created over here this will return that user object if that is if that is nothing it will returns null so i'm going to assign it over here so let me save the changes before saving it let me go here and click the components initial state is going to be null okay because our initial state value is null so let me save the changes here and now it's got refreshed and look at that it's got the value so now the user it doesn't matter whenever the user refreshing it will try to figure it out if that is the user information is in the browser if that is the in the browser then it will give the information over here okay so now it's pretty much done next what we need to do is i need to bring the drop down for the user i need to bring the drop down button when the user clicks this again it's triggering that okay again it's triggering the login information we need to stop that and we need to bring the drop down so what i'm going to do is uh i am going to trigger the login that function that login function should happen only if there is no user only if there is no user the login should happen let me close the reducer initial state and firebase config env we don't need it and index.js we don't need it now let's go back app.js we don't need it now header.js okay so here we are doing this much of activity these all activity should be done only if there is no use okay so if not user because we having we are getting that user information through our state contact form so if there is no user do this otherwise we need to bring that drop down menu so now if you even if you try to click that it will not do anything because we having already having the user information so it will not do anything now what we need to do is i'm going to uh, set the menu we need to bring the menu okay so let's go ahead and create the design first then we will add the state value to monitor all those things okay so i'm going to create a division div and that div is going to use the class property okay so let me <clears throat> design it class name it's going to be uh width it's going to be 40 that means 160 pixels we are fixing the width as 150 pixel okay and vg 
what color we can use so i'm going to use bg primary color itself and i'm going to add some shadow shadow excel and rounded lg rounded lg and i'm going to make it absolute position okay absolute and we will adjust the positions on all those things inside here what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a um i will make this as a flex flex and flex this is going to be flex and flex column okay flex column and inside here we are going to have a new we are going to add a new item so we are going to provide the user to new add new item okay and after that we are going to have one more information what is that information like uh providing the logout button for the user so paragraph tag logout this two let's go ahead and have a look so this is looking like this so instead of this card color we'll change this to gray 50. so that is looking okay not that much good okay so we will manage it what we need to do we need to add some adding and all those things so let's add some px4 py2 let's see okay so that's looking good so absolute we have made it absolute position in if it is absolute what we need to do is uh, keep from the top maintain and left zero let's see mm -hmm. mm, instead of left zero we'll see right right 12 12 is too much 8 nope 4 nope 0 okay 0 is much better and from the top 12 I think this is good okay because when you click this this thing needs to come this need this thing needs to pop up over there okay so drop down menu is now done but we need to work on that uh, that uh, inside that we having the paragraph and all those things right we need to work on those things i need to bring the icons and everything okay let's go here and i'm already having the icon md so i'm just going to add md add and along with that i'm going to add md logout these two options and i'm going to bring the icon over here md add and md logo so let's add some styles hold your alt key and click over here and let's add some styles for it class name okay so px4 px4 and py2 and flex item center gap 3 cursor pointer and hover whenever the user hovering it change the bg color to slate 200 and add transition all duration 100 and ease in ease out and text text color and text base save the changes and actually uh, why we are getting like this this is not supposed to be like this mm, what's the problem then okay we'll remove the padding from here okay now it's looking good perfect
right and this is too dark so what i'm going to do is i'll make it 100 then where is it over here and here oops I think 100 is more than enough okay so this is looking nice now okay so now what we need to do is uh, when the user clicks the logout we need to clear the context and as well as we need to clear the local storage and when the user clicks this nav link this one we need to navigate the user to the uh, create container and but actually this new item it's not for all the users this is for admin users only that means the only the administrator able to see this so how we can uh, manage the administrator and all those things like uh, we don't want to make it much more complex so we'll make it simple okay so i'm just going to give my email address as an admin okay so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to render this only if the user dot email is it's equals to my email so this paragraph tag it's need to be rendered only if the user okay if that is a user and if the user dot email if the user dot email is equals to my email actually dot galaxy at gmail .com. okay only if that you are supposed to be rendered save the change okay otherwise for others it will not render that particular information so now it's working fine no issues over there because it's using in the user it's having my email only so that's why it's rendering that okay and i need to navigate this user to uh, that uh, page so i'm just going to wrap this into link from the react router dom link and this should be imported from react router so let's import it import link from react router dom okay so that's linked now and inside this i'm going to paste that paragraph tag and this is going to be two create item save changes and what is it showing link has been already declared did i declare it somewhere yeah it's already declared over here also so sorry what is it showing logo dot png create item delete this why it's showing error module not found logo uh, what is this console image here we having the logo dot slash why oh, it's not showing the image folder double dot oh when it's changed double dot slash until now how it's worked i don't know now it's working if i click this it's changing the user to the create container it's working perfectly okay so all we have to do now only one thing that is this we need to change this to uh a state we need to change that information okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a state to monitor that let's go here and let's create a state value right after here i'm going to create a state 
so let's say that state value is use state snippet without changing without clicking anywhere just type it is menu is menu and initially it's going to be false okay initially that is going to be false only if that is true we are going to render this menu where it is and this is our image after this image this division that complete that cut that division if is menu and render it if only there is that menu then render it that means if it is true render it otherwise don't render it use state is not defined absolutely we not yet defined it control space import that package now it's not showing when you're clicking this we need to render it actually when you're clicking the login function is triggering if there is not user it is opening the login tab if that is an user then else if that is a user set is menu as not is menu if it is true make it true if it is false make it false say the changes now if i click it it will comes if i click again it will goes actually it's it's planning it's instantly instantly appearing and instantly moving back so what i'm going to do is and i'm going to use the motion wrapper so hold your alt and click here and there and add motion dot div i'm going to add initial value initially the value the opacity level of that is going to be zero and the scale level of that value is going to be 0 0.6 and let me copy it and paste it two more time paste it paste it and instead of this change it to animate and exit while well, initially zero animated to one and while exiting also make this zero animated to so now you can see that if i click this you can see that see like its opacity level is changing and it's coming it's it's like zooming in something like that effect okay and but when i'm let's go to our app where is our app and for this exit bef before enter make this one every time when it's entering will make it exit so add this one so this will avoid like unwanted uh, mistakes unwanted bugs on our on our issues on, on our um what to say uh, if there is any multiple animation is triggering this will avoid unwanted collision between the uh, our animation effects and all those things okay so that's fine now that is pretty much done so if i what happened it's working okay if i click this it's working so state everything is changing fine now uh, when i'm changing this to mobile view see nothing is there so we need to work on mobile view now okay so let's do that so what i'm going to do is um let's go to our header and for the header for this ul tag i'm going to wrap this ul tag with the motion motion dot initial value it's going to be opacity it's going to be zero and x it's going to be 200 animate that opacity 1 and x 0 and while exit keep it as it is like this okay so when i go here it looks like this okay that's fine so if i'm refreshing it 
you can see that it's animating like that okay so like this you can uh, animate one by one layer so now let's go ahead and uh, create our mobile view okay so let me pin it to right side and let me have this soft uh, visual studio code in the left side so let's bring our mobile view so for mobile view um what i need to do is i'm just going to do the same thing only uh instead of i'm going to copy this from here this link tag copy this link and over here i'm going to paste it so logo is displaying over there but um, it's too much right uh, padding level is too much over there so what we can do is we can adjust that padding level let me bring it in the side this is that division so for mobile screen we need to adjust the padding level for this for the header tag for the mobile view we need to adjust the padding level so what we can do is let's go to the header instead of uh, p6 we'll make it to padding 3 top and bottom and instead of this we'll make it p8 p8 is also too much Oh, okay this is fine but for medium device overall padding is going to be p6 and on the px is going to be 16 okay so now if it is changed to big screen that will have that padding effect and if it's changed to normal screen it will have this padding effect cool so now we got our logo and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to um copy this this division complete division copy that division it's starting from here right yeah here to here completely copy this and then I'm going to paste it right after here. Save the changes. It's over here. And I click it, it's bringing that menu. Okay. It's working fine. So let me change this to mobile device mode, toggle device. Perfect. So now it's in the mobile view. Uh, what I need to do is I will push this completely let's keep it item center item center justify between save changes now it's over there if i click it it's coming perfectly okay so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to bring all those ul tag also inside here so i will copy this um you will tag where is this you will complete you will i'll copy this you will and i will bring it after or before before this logout before this logout not here in the mobile menu so not there in the mobile menu copy it this is where our mobile menu is starting and this is our mobile menu and here i need to paste that ul tag but i don't want this animation and all those things for it so let me close it and let me close here also and we don't need this objects anymore close it and this is going to be flex column save changes and now we have our all the menus over here but the problem is um, i think it's because of this yep it's because of that um, and what is the problem this is the problem 
ओप्स कॉपी पेस्ट सो दैट्स फिक्स द सोल्यूशन ओके सो दैट्स प्रिटी मच डन एंड वी ऑल्सो डिड वन मोर इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर अवर ऑन होवर सो ऑन होवर वेट अ सेकेंड हाउ इज लुकिंग let me copy it and i add it for this click here click here click here click here paste it and so this is the problem see hovering now here how it's looking here how it's looking this is the problem so what you need to do is you should not add that px over there so add px4 over here py over here instead of this add it over there save the changes and that should solve the issue but what about about maybe i missed the about that's why paste it mm but now problem is everywhere it's increasing so let me remove py or because of this gap i think so remove the gap also yeah now it's pretty much done it's not because of that it's because of the gap and we'll remove this gap also not this so this gap is for that so did i add any gap for uh, this division no 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 gap for it okay so now this is our mobile uh, our mobile uh, view menu icon so when the user clicks it this is how they can see that uh, option over there so what i can do is um where it is one second where is that division right click inspect you will tag this is that you will tag completely and this is that division over here so if you wish to change that div like if you instead of having this much of small uh, in small box and all those things if you wish to have much more bigger that's you are free to use so but i'm okay with that i'm just going to keep it as it is okay so, but instead of uh, log out to look it like that what i'm going to do is i'm going to change that log out a little bit uh what we can do is uh last here over here uh i will change this to justify center now log out will be in the center and apart from that everything will be in a different way and bg slate 200 that will looks in a different color or bg gray 200 okay that's looking in a different color on hover i will make it to 300 like that so that is pretty much done so i'll change this to gray perfect that's looking good apart from everything it's looking in that way and only this it's looking in this way okay so and instead of these two m2 okay then we will add e2 also perfect now the login button is looking perfect and rounded md and shadow lg perfect not shadow lg medium so now the login button is looking as apart from all these things logout will looks completely different only one thing is remaining that is the logout we didn't add the logout event so for this paragraph 
okay i'm going to add an on click event on click i'm going to say log out. let me copy it and i need to paste it over here also log out we will create that function const log out is equals okay so what we need to do is we need to log out now so for that i'm going to do whenever the user clicks log out we need to clear we need to update the state provider we need to update the local storage and as well as we need to hide that menu also because when the user clicks that it needs to be hide so first i'm just going to say set is menu as false okay and then um set is menu as false then local storage dot clear okay then we will set the user dispatch type action type dot set user comma user is equals now set the user to now so this will do all the work okay so now if i click log out look at that so let's make sure everything is fine inspect and if i go to our application there is nothing and if i go to our components in the state provider value user is now okay so we successfully finished the header component along with the user authentication and the state provider and all those things so next we'll move on to our main container okay then so only one thing is missing in our uh, mobile uh, header so what is that missing is like we need to have that caught information over there so let's fix that and we'll move on to our main section now so what we have to do is um over where is the caught information we are adding we are adding the caught information over here this is that caught information so copy it and paste it that's it simple simple as that so paste it here save the changes and now we have that caught information in the center but i don't need that caught information in the center so what i can do is better i will bring this image center and i keep the caught in the left side okay so that's looking good right perfect <clears throat> Right, so that's um, bringing the image and uh, cart and everything in the perfect place. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to move on to our main container. So let's go here. So actually, the main container it's uh, tool to top from the top. It's like you can see here. Uh, where is the root over here? this is the overall height it's taking so far that's fine see but the margin top it's too wide so what i can do is uh instead of uh, margin top margin top like that much we can say i'm sorry so we can say like 16 i think 16 is enough for mobile view from the medium it's going to be mt24 okay that's fine so then now let's move on to our main container where is the main container over here so in the main container let's write these styles let's open it so we are going to use the grid grid template in the uh, for our header section so what i'm going to do is and 
um, this is the thing so let's go here if you have a look at it so it's using the grid columns grid column template so they are making the grid column how many columns they want to divide it so they are dividing it so for mobile screen we need to keep it only one column only we are not going to break it but from the medium device uh, but from the larger large device we are going to break it okay so we are going to break it um, when we can divide it okay we'll divide it from the medium device itself so we'll add the class name class name it's going to be grid okay grid column column it's going to be one grid calls it's going to be one because here they given us four but we are going to break it as one okay and inside this I'm going to have two division div div and for this two division I'm going to have a class class adding four and bg blue or something i'm just giving for them i'm just going to make sure and flex one take the complete available space and then from the medium device grid column two save the changes let's see nothing is happening because we are in the create container let's go to the home okay so gap let's add some gap gap is going to be two so this gap is more than enough and the padding why this padding is coming this much where is that padding we added that padding somewhere uh, over here so we will make sure wait a second if it is bigger uh, I will remove this if it is bigger it's looking like this when it's going to be smaller on small screen it's breaking perfectly okay so for big screen padding 8 it's not sufficient so what we can do is for the big screen how much we need to add we need to double it x 16 so i think this is enough i think so because uh, the left side space and everything good okay and the padding p y o top and bottom we need to have some space in the top and bottom for that purpose okay so margin top 24 is more than or so 18 I think 18 is too close. 22. 22 is more than 20. Then. Okay, 20 is more than enough. For uh, this, 16 is too much, I think so. 14. Okay, perfect. So let me bring it to the mobile view now. Okay, so but uh, you can see that that px16 is not uh, this is for medium device okay this is for medium device for the for the mobile screen we'll say px8 nope ps4 okay this is good okay for the mobile screen it will take that that much space so this is more than enough so our grid and everything is now working is absolutely perfectly so let's move on to inner division one by one so i don't need this background color anymore background color we don't need that background color if i'm adding some content where it's starting it's starting too much inside so we don't need this padding also because we already added that padding at the top itself Okay, so we will add padding 2, padding PY2, that's more than enough, top and bottom padding, left and right, we don't need it, do the same thing for here, PY2, okay, so this is enough, now instead of high over here, we are going to design it, 
So, okay, so first what I'm going to do is, so we are going to display the home um, content, the fastest delivery in the city. Okay, so for that, I'm just going to create a paragraph and this is flex, flex, flex column. Okay, and item start, justify, I'll justify in the center and for medium device item center okay perfect so for this paragraph what we are going to say we are going to say bike delivery and here i'm going to um, instead of opening as a paragraph we'll create a div and inside that we have that paragraph and here i need to have the image actually what image we are going to load is we having an image called uh, bike delivery where is it delivery 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 ah here it is this is that i'm going to load this image so let me copy that image rename copy it and import it import delivery from dot slash image slash delivery dot png and over here let's load that image this is going to be inside a div div and then that div is going to be a width of 10 hatch 10 rounded full overflow hidden and inside here um, we are going to say um, that image let's say delivery and the source is going to be delivery and then class name is going to be width full take the parent width height full object contain say the changes so that why you can see that bike over there with a the small size of it but color bg white uh, now you can see that color over there so this is not supposed to be looks like that we need to change make some two changes over there what i'm going to do is for this division we'll make it as flex that means for our paragraph on the image division flex item center gap to oh, not 12 to justify center now it's looking over there that is perfect absolutely all right and bg uh orange 300 that is two dot 100 i think this is enough i think so and we need 200 nope 100 and adding let's say two this is too big actually that image is too big so instead of 10 what we can do is uh, with six height six okay this is perfect now and here this for this we will make a rounded full perfect and this text color will make the change the text color class name text base text base and text orange dark orange and font semi bold okay so that's looking good now mm -hmm. and we will make it a little bit bigger eight eight 
I think I need to change it here px2 py1 okay that's looking good now for this division let me add some drop shadow drop shadow x okay that's looking perfect now okay so this will make it four fine so that is done so after this division now after this division what we are going to do is we are going to bring the text so we need to bring the text and we can say that the paragraph tag the paragraph tag the fastest delivery in your city and in your city is going to be in a span tag say the changes okay so for this i'm going to say um class name text to r e m that's more than enough font bold okay so we need to make it much more bigger so 2.5 like this okay then letter So spacing, spacing oh not this one. Letter spacing uh, I forget that one. Uh tailwind letter space. Yeah, letter spacing. Tracking, oh, tracking normal, tracking wide. Okay, let's use tracking wide. Tracking wide. I think this is enough. I think so. And the text highlight color. Okay, so that's perfect. But for the span tag, class name, text, orange, 500. Uh, 700, that's 600. Perfect. This is perfect. And it should be a little bit more text. or in perfect okay so now this is uh, okay that's absolutely fine so then what we need to do after this we need to have one more paragraph and that is going to be some lorem ipsum and then its name text base and text text color that is fine okay so but the problem is we don't have that uh, enough space between it we need to bring that enough space to bring that enough space what we can do is uh, we can increase the gap where is this division okay this is the complete division is ending so we can add some gap over here gap six i think this is enough i think so okay so now it's having some gap over there so we can see the see those contents everything clearly so after this paragraph so i'm going to make this one as a 
text center and for medium device text text left okay for mobile screen it's going to be in the center but for the medium device it's good going to be in the left side okay so now let's bring the uh, after this paragraph will bring one button button type is going to be button and I'm just going to say order now or now class name it's going to be um, uh, oh, oh, BG gradient BG gradient to bottom right and from orange 400 to orange 100 so that will give us a button with a gradient color and this should going to take the width 100 percent and padding 4 like this uh, px4 py2 this is enough then rounded lg okay and on over shadow lg and shadow lg transition let's say transition all ease in ease out duration 100 seconds okay so let's see how it's looking in the mobile uh, this is how it's looking in the mobile view when you're bringing it to big screen it's looking in this way so we need to fix that one so what we need to do is if it is in the big screen it's taking this this button is taking complete uh, width we need to avoid that so what we need to do is we need to fix that issue so let me keep my screen in the right side over here so what I'm going to do is for this um, we are making medium item center that's why it's coming in the center so I'll keep it on these as a start itself so we don't need this anymore then keep it in the left side and for this button I'm not going to this is this is that division and this is that division justify also it's going to start still it's not changing so for this then what we can say button flex then no for mobile we are keeping width full right then for medium device from the medium device we will make the width as auto okay look at that now it's looking much better right so we're having that nice hover and this is looking fine so we need to make some changes over here for the text size on from the medium size on the medium i'm just going to say the text size is going to be 4.5 or here up 4.5 is too much 4 or em that's 4.25 okay 4.25 is looking better 
or we'll keep 4.5 itself 4.5 is better i think so then for this from medium device uh text size is going to be 5 or yeah perfect it looks like this that's looking perfect and we will fix the width of this one so width is going to be um, from the medium device from the medium device this paragraph is going to take the width of width of 80 percentage so now it's taking that 80 percentage of the width but this is when it comes to the mobile screen it looks exactly in this way when it goes to big screen it looks in the medium screen it's looking like this uh, we need to reduce the font size on the medium screen mm. font 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 over here instead of this for the medium screen we'll make it large screen from the large screen we'll have have it from the large screen you might you can have that particular size until then use the same size okay when it comes to large screen it will change until then it uses the same size for the mobile screen it uses the same sizes and all those things look at that so we created the successfully a responsive home left side component then we will move on to the next right side component and that's what we are going to do next okay then so next what we need to do is we need to work on this right side section but actually right now only i realize main container is going to be our main component for most of the child component like uh, under the main this is the entirely main container inside that main container we are going to have home section menu section about a service and everything separate separate section but uh, we structured it with a normal division itself so what we need to do is we can create a new component called home home container dot jsx rafc and let's open the index.js and add it over here export default as home container from dot slash home container save changes now go back to the home container over here from the main container this division entirely copy it and paste it here and we need to have some imports so copy this cut it and paste it here say the home container and this inside this we don't need anything instead of this grid what i'm going to say is i'm going to say flex this is main container right grid uses the width complete width Height auto and flex flex column item center justify everything in the center and bring the home container over here save the changes no difference anymore okay later if i want to add anything else right after the home container i will add that section over here okay so oh over there what i'm going to fix is for this grid uh this is going to take the 100 percentage width we'll fix that width it's going to take the width full and height this section is going to take the height screen height so it will take this screen height completely okay but why it's having that margin i think it's because of uh, margin i think so this is the main and this is the division we having okay we need to calculate the 
from the screen uh, we need to remove that um, height of our uh, header tag what is our header tag height header tag height is approximately 88 pixels so we need to remove that height from our screen height okay so what we can do is um, okay we'll see we can calculate it right we can write calculation calc calc 100 percentage minus 88 pixels say we changes it doesn't show any difference because it's taking 100 percentage only because parent division uh it's it's not it's auto only right that's why it's not taking that 100 percentage because 100 percentage when it's used 100 percentage when the parent is taking the 100 percentage our main division will take the 100 percentage right but our main division itself it's not taking the fully height it's not we didn't mention any height for it see that's why that's why it's not taking that one anyway it's working fine so we don't need to have uh, any height and all those things uh instead of this what we can say we can say yes we will leave it as it is and instead of this division i will change this to as a section section save changes okay section and i'll give a name for the section as id home like that slash we can give it as a id home okay so now we are done with the home container over here but uh, we need to fix this one we need to fix this one we need to have a picture and all those things over here okay so let's start designing that one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say uh, i'm having a bg image hero where is the hero bg so i'm having this picture i'm going to load this picture over there okay so we are going to load this picture let's go ahead and load that picture where it is again it's gone right click rename control a control c bring it import hero bg from double dot slash image slash hero bg and let's load it we don't need this color anymore save changes and then here i need to load that um, what we can say mm. we can keep one division class name with full flex item center justify center relative and let's load this image over here image and actually we can create this Mm. wait a second this is not needed we load that image directly then we will see hero pg and we can say this as hero bg save it and let's see okay it's loading like this okay so we need to fix the height issues or we will leave it as it is what we can do we need to fix the height issues with this so height class name is, is equals height of this is going to be 420 pixels
420 420 I think it's too small mm. height take the full height whatever you want take the full height no nope. where is the tailwind collapse it tailwind config height what is the maximum height we having 688 and 800 let's try with 688 6 600 and 685 685 then I think 685 is more than enough okay so we will bring this and we will make this absolute top zero right all right g h t right 16 we need to bring it from the top no 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 and we should not make it absolute it's not coming how we are expecting it this should be in the right side so we will make flex i did center and it's going overflow now so we need to avoid the overflow also mm. so what we need to do is what is the best solution to do is only one way to do it uh, we can say this as margin margin left auto so now it's in the right side okay and we can say 650 as a height and here we'll add that height 650 colon 650 pixels i think this is okay perfect it's fitting perfectly but it's overflowing so what we can do is let's go to index.css over here um, we need to hide the overflow x overflow main container overflow x hidden main overflow x hidden then home no nope. so we need to do with some in the index only so body overflow x hidden yep now it's not overflowing in the x direction okay so this is now perfectly all right next what we need to do is we need to bring the next step the next step is after this i'm going to create one division and that division is going to be with full height full. okay so let's see and that is going to be absolute and flex add center justify center okay so bg blue or something okay it's taking that height and everything completely so leave it justify center so it's working perfectly so if i am changing this to mobile screen let's see how it's looking mobile screen
so mobile view this is the mobile view and height of this picture is taking quite a very big height right so we need to fix the height of this picture to fix this height of this picture to do that what we can do is um, let's go to our for uh, normal from the medium device no 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 this is for lg from the large device you can use it apart from that height is going to be 370 something height is going to be 370 something and width is going to be full width it should be full me from the large device with auto we'll make it a little bit bigger a little bit taller 400 420 okay now when it comes to medium screen it's taking okay fine perfect big screen it's looking like this okay so now it's completely responsive but over here now what we are going to do is we are going to load some static items and all those things that's what we are going to load because initially uh, we are going to bring some special the uh, dishes and we are going to keep the dishes over here that's what we are going to design it now okay so let's go ahead and we'll do that particular thing and that's what we are going to do next okay then so now let's bring some items over here so to do that what i'm going to do is so let's design it first then later we'll make it as a separate component and we will look through it okay so what i'm going to do is so let's go ahead and uh, design first first that one and first of all so let's create a division div and that division is going to be a certain width, width of how much what is the width we can see one 90 padding to okay save the changes and bg red or something for the time being it's over here why it's over there width full height full okay top zero left zero where is here so now it's over here okay so what we can do is So for this, we can add some PX uh, 16 PY 4. So we need to add much more uh, PX 32 expect. So this is the thing, this is just a trial and error only. You just need to focus on that design and we need to work on those things. So this is the absolute position, right? Height and width. It's not actually, it's not taking the full width. Let's add some VG. Oops, it's taking the overall, it sh should be take this height, so relative, 
okay so now it's working perfect what is the problem now i need to change everything again come on bg blue remove the bg blue okay so now it's perfectly where we needed it's over here okay so now let me go ahead and add some information so let me remove the color so what i'm going to do is for this go to tailwind in the color section i'm going to add uh hard overlay let's say rgba 256 comma 256 comma 256 comma 0 0.4 Let's add that color for our container. BG overlay, hard overlay, and backdrop blur medium. Like that. Okay, so that's looking perfect now. Then inside that, first I need to um, bring the image. I need to bring the image so let's for the time being i'm just going to load uh, some image from here from the local host okay because anyway i'm just going to load that static information only uh, because that's a home screen right every time when the user opening that we are just going to show that uh, that information that's it static information okay so for that let me choose what image we can uh, use so where is that image and what is the image we can use and i'm going to show uh what image we can use actually so we will show three different categories we will show ice cream and any foods and spices okay we'll show fruit ice cream fruits and one rice and one chicken over there okay that's perfect so let's load this ice cream first i1 i think so yeah so let's go here and where is the i1 i i here i1 this is the picture we are going to load it cool so copy it paste it and this is going to be i1 i1 save the changes and load this picture I one I one so class name it's going to be with um with forty oh that's too much twenty okay it's loading that picture over here we will make it a little bit bigger increasing okay this is perfect so with 40 pixel 40 it's okay so what we need to do is minus top 32 why margin top is not moving oh, okay it should be absolute then only it will work <sighs> okay instead of that what i can do is minus empty 32 margin top that's too big mm, 16 20 i think 20 is enough and for this we will make a rounded md rounded md and padding to okay that's good padding 2 is already added so we will make it much more. padding 4 I think padding 4 is more than enough 
then what we need to do is we will add that uh, text in, uh, text for it so we will make it flex item center justify center perfect then we will add that uh, name parag name tag for it paragraph let's say uh, what is this uh, chocolate vanilla anything flex column flex forget to add flex column flex column so now it's coming in the flex column direction so what i'm going to say is for this this thing let's say class name text base and font semi bold text text color so that's looking good so after that uh, i'm going to add one more thing that's a paragraph you can say uh, simply we say ice cream chocolate and vanilla flavor because i love vanilla flavor so that's why then class name text sm text gray 500 font semi bold um i think we should remove this flavor that's perfect chocolate and vanilla vanilla sorry vanilla chocolate and vanilla so that is looking good over there and this color what we need to do is uh, i'm not uh, fond of it this fond of this color we need to change that color so i'm just going to change that color so just a moment let me see what color we can use so uh we can add this color in the over here light uh text gray and we will use this color instead of this save the changes and okay this is much better okay then what we can do is after this we need to display the uh, another one paragraph tag and that is going to display some price amount 5.25 something save the changes and that's looking good and let's add some we will keep this in the span tag class name text uh, sm font semi bold and text highlight heading color that's fine for this i'm just going to say class name text excess uh, text red 600 like this okay so that's looking good now okay so this card is looking good and we need to add some space between each and everything so for this middle paragraph tag i'm adding my as four so i think that is uh too much so three okay so this is looking good so we need to alter this little bit we need to alter that uh, edges little bit instead of uh, md 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 i'll make it lg large no difference three xl okay this is now fine 
so this car is now looking absolutely awesome so this text it's need to be a little bit bigger so what i can say is instead of this i'll say large instead of this this i'm going to say medium and this i'm going to say sm perfect mm, but this is coming in the next line why then let's make it sm itself okay so that's looking good now perfect and all we have to do okay so for this let's add some margin top margin top six oh that's too much four okay this is perfect so now let's load something else like some other pictures and let's see uh, we, like this we need to load four different objects for the static information so what i'm going to say is instead of uh, loading it like that i'm just going to say const hero data is equals an array id one name ice cream screen and uh, description description is going to be chocolate and vanilla and price is going to be dollar And price is going to be 5.25 something like that because these are the static informations right and we need picture also image source is going to be this image source so what we can do is in the utils I'm going to create one more file called data dot js and I'm going to keep this inside the data.js. I'm going to bring this image out here. So image source is going to be uh, I1. Just like this, I'm going to copy it, paste it four more times because I need four data to three four comma 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 so what is the next picture we can keep over there we can keep uh, mm, 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 mm. so we will keep this one f1 so so change this to f1 f1 here f1 instead of chocolate and vanilla that is raspberry raspberry what is this f1 fruit not to. strawberry fresh strawberries okay fresh strawberry you can see it's fresh strawberry over there then you can see strawberries and that's price is going to be 
F1 and next image is going to be uh, we will load like uh, ice cream fruits and then we will load okay C3 chicken copy it C3 C3 mix it kebab light chicken kebab let's say 8.25 or something and last one we can see um uh, Okay, what is this? Fish one, FI one, fish. FI one. FI one. Copy it. Paste it here. C three. And this is mixed fish kebab something name it whatever name you want fish kebab save changes and hero data export export const hero data and over here we will map through that hero data with this details here we will take hero data if that is hero data then hero data dot map n element render the component paste this division and we'll supply the key as n dot id and here n dot image source here n dot name here n dot description and here n dot price save changes it should not throw any error now and it's bringing the cards everything but actual problem is it's trying to keep everything over there okay it's trying to keep everything over there itself uh we need to do something for that what we can do is let me bring this side by side over here so that i can see it so what's the problem is we need to fix the minimum width minimum width um one ninety what is this minimum with 190 pixels okay so now it's taking the minimum with 190 pixels and for this take the gap to okay now there is a gap and flex wrap perfect now there is a flex wrap and all those things okay so this is looking good now but the gap is not enough so we will made it gap oh. okay instead of uh, adding gap okay i think this is good i think so because uh, we can see that image and as well as the text and everything is looking awesome and if you want to add some shadow effects add some shadow effects but i think so if you're adding some shadow that looks that gives much more uh, richness for your card it's look giving some rich looks for your card so this is looking awesome right so now uh, let's see how responsive it is let's bring it so it's perfect it's, it's looking awesome and so what we need to do is 
mm, 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 mm. for mobile screen we need to do some customization mm -hmm. we need to avoid using the minimum width then because of this only it's making that issue so here in the big screen it's looking fine but when it's going to mobile screen medium screen so let's fix the medium screen uh, why it's actually happening like that let's figure it out why py and this is that width width full okay because of the px okay i understood we having the px 32 over here because of this one it's taking that so and medium on medium width this is the medium right so in the medium uh 370 pixels so for this we will keep it smaller so we will change it we'll fix the mobile screen then we'll fix the mobile screen so that we can able to fix it for others other screen so what we can do is and for this is for from the medium uh, from the large device from the large device which is going to be 190 okay so uh, for uh, medium device I'm going to reduce this. This is from large size. For normal, I'm just going to make it 20. That's perfect. And this is for large device. But for others, minus empty, let's say 10. Okay. And the text size for this. For large device, it's text Excel, and for other device, just base itself. Okay, and this is for large device margin top, or others margin top two. Okay, and we need to fix this one also this is for large device margin top 3 for others margin my1 okay so description and this is on large device for others text 10 pixel this is fine now this is looking okay text uh, we can say 12 pixels okay so now the mobile device is for the mobile device it's looking awesome perfect absolutely perfect okay so header we need to fix the header where is the header 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 we need to fix the background because see when i'm scrolling i can't see that uh, background for it where is the header and we'll say bg primary and now that's absolutely fine when i'm scrolling down i can see it clearly okay and here also it's looking awesome 
and now when I bring this to big screen when I'm making it bigger and medium screen and when it comes to large screen that's absolutely looking cool perfect so now it's working perfect guys so we successfully finished our mobile screen why it's looking over here why it's happening like this mm, maybe because of we removed that padding right so let's fix that one now now itself where is the home container in the home container i removed the padding for this one for this just for this one so for the large device px32 that brings it over here okay for the large device we are adding the px32 apart from any other thing we don't have that uh, padding and all those things so we successfully completed the home component so next we move on to our our top dishes component that's what we are going to do next okay then so now we completed the home component so we have a nice look for our web page now so let's go ahead and uh, work on our uh, create container because later everything we need to fetch the details from the uh, firebase only so let's go ahead and create the uh, new container the create container let's work on the create container so that's what we are going to do that and if you notice that even when i click it this, this is not moving up so we need to fix that one this is an issue so we need to fix that one so that is in your header so whenever i'm clicking something okay so over here for this i will add that on click event for this one and for what else for that one and for over here for all these things for all the li tags here 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 everywhere for everywhere we need to add on click event on click callback function set s menu as false save the changes and for logout oh we already did that now it will gone if i click that it will be gone fine okay so now what we need to do here is uh, we need to design a form where we can store the information to our firebase so that's what we are going to do that so let's me let's close this home container header data.js index.js fetch local and all we have to go to create container so main container not needed not needed not needed keep it simple okay so here what we are going to do is class name uh, and this class name is going to take the width full width height auto and then um, adding let's say 4 p4 save the changes that's coming inside a little bit actually we don't need the padding i think so yeah we don't need the padding and inside this i'm going to create one more division and that division is going to be for the small screen width is going to be uh, 90 percentage for from the medium devices width is going to be 75 percentage and the border it's going to be and border gray 200 rounded edge save the changes 
so we can see that over here and for this we'll make it flex icon center justify center now it's in the center and we'll add some padding default now you can see that over here that border over here okay okay so we'll fix the minimum height for this as minimum height screen so that will take the minimum height as screen and for this border let's say 300 and now we can see that border much more better okay so inside this border what inside this uh, we will make everything as flex flex column item center justify center okay then uh, what we need to do is uh, we will add one by one text field inside it one by one input field inside it so first of all what we are going to do we are going to add the input field okay so let's add that input field to add that input field um what i'm going to say what i'm going to do is um let's let's create all the states which is necessary for this particular uh, kind of particular form so we need to add what are the things we need to add we need to add the title we need to add the uh, calories how many calories it's need to burn and uh, it, it's it will give and then price details category details field details alert status lots of states are there so let's add quite uh, those informations over there okay and let's see uh, what we what we need to do is um i'll copy and paste all those states whatever the states we need to create i'll copy those states and then paste those states so over here so we need title calories price categories these are all these states and then um, this is the boolean value to monitor whether there is any error or anything if there is any error we need to display that particular fields okay and to bring in in case if there is any error we need to bring the alert message for those alert message we need to have these states and i'm also having uh, to monitor slowly loading status or not is that is any loading status we need to load it and this is the image download url image as asset okay so these are all the states which we needed for this particular uh, particular form build okay so then what we need to do is uh first here is there is any um in case uh let's say i'll make it true at the top we are just going to make that alert field if there is any issues or anything we need to display if the fields if there is a fields then render it what we are going to do i'm just going to keep that uh, paragraph tag okay and then i'm just going to say something wrong and then we later will change this messages and all those things something wrong okay and i'm just going to write the class name class name class name let's open the dynamic object backtick string literal width it should take the full width and padding it should take to rounded lg and then text should be in the center okay and then we are opening the dynamics block of code if the alert status if the alert status is equals equals to danger if it is equals equals to danger then make it bg red 400 text red 
800 otherwise make it bg emerald 400 text emerald 800 save the changes so use state is not defined exactly we not yet imported that package import it and save the changes and look at that so it is danger over there that's why now if i change this to something else it will give the green color so alert is working fine um, but this text is not looking quite good so what we can do is we'll add some style text lg font semi bold and now the user can clearly see that uh, notification over here okay so then what we can do is um i'm just going to change this as a message if there is any message it will be printed and i will change this field to false this will be executed only if that is that is true and i'm going to add the motion uh, so import motion from frame or motion hold your alt key and alt key and click it over here and type motion dot paragraph and for this initial stage it's going to be uh, opacity zero we are just going to animate it animate exit opacity okay so now if I let me bring it over here and I keep it this side by side if I change this fields to true you can see that it's like fading in if I make it false it will fade out okay so it's working fine it's absolutely working fine so let me bring this to mobile view short view okay so this is looking good and let me enable the mobile view itself okay so perfect i think 80 percentage of uh, 90 percentage of width is working perfectly all right so then now what we need to do is after this fields after this fields now we need to bring um one uh, input field that's to enter the title so i'm just going to bring a division okay <clears throat> class name width it should take full width and py it should take to border bottom and border gray 300 flex item center okay and then in case if there is any uh, item center is enough and gap two and inside this division let's import an icon for that import md okay so let's import react icons slash md md uh, fast food this one this icon and let's bring that icon over here md fast food and let's say class name text excel and text gray 700 so now we have that uh, icon and we have this border over here and now we need to bring the input field input text and this is the required field required and value it's going to be title value it's going to be title and and then uh, placeholder it's going to be um give me a title give me a title and then uh, okay so that is that input box is looking awkward so let's fix that one so class name it's going to be width full height full okay and then text 
LG, BG transparent, font semi bold, semi bold. If I am typing something, okay, we need to add a on change event. On change, we call a callback function and it will throw an event. To that event, we'll set the title as e dot get dot value whenever the value is get updated title will get updated so this is the thing fine and we need to remove the uh, outline and border outline none border none bg transparent is done and after that place holder place holder text gray Okay, so placeholder text gray 500. If I'm typing something, that's looking awesome. Okay, so text color, we need to change the text color. So text, uh, text color. Perfect. So this will make it 300. Uh, or we will make it 400. Perfect. Okay, so input is now done. First input is done. So next we will move on to the second input and the second input is going to be the category. For the category, let's go to the data.js and in the data.js, I'm going to add that category. So let me add those categories over here. Just a moment. <clears throat> so what are the categories we having in our images? Uh, chicken curry and drinks fruits ice cream rice okay so let's add on by one so let me copy those things and paste it over here so let's say first one chicken and curry and rice curry rice fish it's okay and we don't have pizza we have uh, fruits fruits and and snacks no ice cream Ice creams and then we added the rice chicken we having fish we having and curries we having and rice we having fish we having fruits we having it and then no and then drinks soft drinks drinks and this is going to be the seventh one and we don't have this sound well, say the changes so this is going to be our category so you don't need to worry about it you can download this uh, from the description below i'll just copy and paste that code over there just copy it and paste it for your purpose okay so let me go here and now what we are going to do is we are going to create uh, we are going to simply replicate those things uh, for a certain number of time okay so let's create it first so over here after this division this is the division where it's getting end and after here i'm going to create a div and that div is going to be class name and that is going to take width full and inside here i'm going to create the select tag select tag and inside the select tag we are going to have the options options value for this particular option i'm just going to say other and class name is going to be bg white okay and the category is saying going to be select category okay that's the first option and for this i'm just going to say on change on change 
I will call a callback function and an event and then I will set the category with e dot target dot value not validate value okay we will set that and after this remaining options all the options we are going to render it from where categories from the categories if that is the categories and categories dot map we will map through each and every uh, item into it and we will render different component inside it okay inside this we are going to render the option tag option and that is going to carry on the key key is going to be item dot id and it's going to change the have the class name class name it's going to be text base border zero outline none capitalize okay outline none capitalize and if you want to change the background also so i'm just going to give a background bg white and text um text color text high heading color and the value we are going to give the value was over here category not category item dot name and the value for this option whenever the changes is happening we need to set the value right so value it's going to be item dot url parent name okay because the filtering and all those things we are going to do we will pass this in the parameter in the url parameter and we will fetch it and we will change the fil uh, filtering options and everything so now you can see that this is displaying that information okay fine so now what we need to do is over here um this thing over here this is not looking that much great so let's fix that one so what is the issue maybe uh maybe the mm, select 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 ah okay it's because we didn't add any style name for the class uh for the select query for the select tag so outline should be none and width should be full and text should be base border bottom two and then border gray 200 padding two and rounded md and cursor pointer so that will create our style tag like this that now it's looking good and there is no space between it so what we can do is we can add some space manually over here so yeah Oh. so that will increase the gap between the each and every uh, input tag so now if I expand it that gives us this nice box over here okay so that I can choose anything so that value will get updated okay fine so now it's working fine so then what we have to do is after this select tag so this is the division it's getting entered after this we need to uh load our app box where we can upload the image so for that i'm going to have a division okay and that division is going to uh have a very big class detail so class name it's going to be in group okay let's say it's a group and flex and let's say justify center item center and the flex column border uh, we can say two border two and border dotted we need only dotted border not dot, dotted and border gray 300 
and width it should be full height for the mobile screen you can say 225 but from the medium screen height should be 4 height 420 okay and then cursor pointer save the changes so that will gives you this box over here rounded md we didn't add it okay so rounded lg save the changes now it's having that rounded shape over there so inside this what i'm going to do is i need to bring up that loader if it is loading or or anything else we need to bring up that loader so let's go ahead and design that loader now okay so let's create a new component called loader dot jsx rafce and index and let's copy that copy it paste it and let's bring the loader and we will paste it over here save the changes and here actually what loader we are going to use is if in in online if you search for uh tailwind css loader like if you search for something like that you can see uh, lots of options in the floor byte or anywhere so we are going to use this loading animation that spinning animation okay so but we are going to use a quite a very big one so this one so i'm just going to uh copy this one okay we are just going to copy it and we are going to use it because this is a big one and we are going to use it like this you can see it's having this button loading animation and all those things so you can use anything any anyone uh you you wish but i'm going to use that one okay so let let's paste that code the copied code inside over here so instead of this division i'm just going to paste it over here okay so if you wish to change the colors and all those things you can change the fill color and all those fill color and everything over here okay so i'm just going to leave it as it is and then that's it let's save the changes and let's go back to the container okay so here now what we need to do is uh if it is loading so let's say if it's in that uh, loading status if this loading is true if that loading is true if it's loading then load the loader otherwise simply have this react fragment so now if you check over there you can see it's having this nice loader it's looking right so this is for for this purpose only we added that particular loader so let's me keep it small and let me expand it perfect okay so now what we need to do inside this react fragments okay so now what we are going to do is uh in case if that is and um, uh, if we having we also having the image asset URL, that means once I uploaded my image in the Firebase, it will gives me an URL. If that is that if that URL is not there, I need to do something over here. So that's what we are going to do next. Okay, so we will do that now. Okay, then so now let's uh, go ahead and create this. So let me change the state back to false because we know that it's working perfectly fine. So let's change that state back now and i'm going to check a condition over here if that is image if that is uh, if the image asset is not present if the image asset is null then uh, i want to do something if it is not i want to do something okay so inside here uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to create a label label inside this label we are going to have a class name class name called width is going to be full height is going to be full flex 
grateful rightful flex flex column item center justify center cursor pointer and inside this label we are going to create one more division and that division is going to be our class name just like the same class name except one change copy from here and paste it exact everything is same except that one then we need to have a cloud upload icon so over here cloud upload md cloud upload will bring that icon inside over here md cloud upload so class name and text gray 500 text gray 500 and text 3 excel and hover will change the text gray color to 700 and right after here on paragraph tag and that is is going to be click here to upload then it will gives the class name we will get the class name text gray 500 and i think the same thing so copy it from here and paste it over here instead of this text 3 excel we'll just keep it as it is so look at that just like this click here to upload and we will add a gap for it as a tool so that will have some space over there so now that's having nice look over there okay and after this paragraph division over here we are going to have an input input tag if this is not going to be a text this is going to be a file and name of this is going to let's say upload image okay it's it can accept only the image in image it can accept any category image slash star so accept type it can be anything so that's why we are using image slash star and after this on change uh, i'm just going to call a callback function upload image this function is currently it's not there so it will throws the error so right over here i'm just going to say const upload image is going to be an arrow six function empty function for time being right now okay and then uh, using the class name i'm just going to say width zero height zero width zero height zero say the changes so now if the user clicks here it will open the that tab over there okay so that's looking great and it's uh, absolutely fine in case if there is an asset url what do you want to do then if there is an asset url then div class name position relative height full okay and inside here i'm just going to take bring the image whatever the image asset you are it's having image asset will load that image asset over there and then let's say uploaded image that's the name okay after this image okay this will be only displayed or uh, if that is an image asset otherwise it will not display over there then and i'm also having i'm going to add a button for the user so that they can if they don't wish to have that thing he can simply delete it and he can upload re-upload the another one so class name it's going to be absolute absolute bottom three and right three padding three rounded full rounded full bg red 500 and text excel and cursor pointer outline none on hover I'm, i need the shadow lg and oh sorry not lg medium 
duration uh 100 milliseconds transition all is in out okay that's fine so on click this button needs to do something on click this button is going to delete that image delete that image so let's create this function at the top after over here const delete image is equals simply an empty function inside this button we are going to add an icon called md delete icon okay so over here md delete class name text what okay so you will see uh, this button when there is an image over here at that time you can see that particular button okay so for this image tag we didn't add any style so class name is going to be width you should take the full width height you should take the full width object cover okay so now we are done with this uploading section upload section over here okay so uh, next what we can do is show you what we can do and all those things so after this now what we need to do is after this uh, I'm going to create <coughs> like uh, one more input field that is going to give us the calories and all those things okay so let's create that division right after where right after this is over here um where we need to add this is that division right Ah, okay over here this is the tuition this is where it's getting end so then div it's going to use the class name class name is going to be with full absolutely and then flex no okay and then flex column normally normally flex column but from on medium device it's going to take flex flex row item center gap 3 okay then inside this we are going to have one more division and that's going to be width that's also taking the width full width and py and then border b border gray 300 flex item center gap 2 and inside here and I'm just going to say MD food. Oh, it's not showing suggestions. I don't know why. Previously, it's used to show the suggestions over there. MD food bank. MD food bank. Food bank. Okay. And then class name text gray 700 and text to Excel and input required placeholder um, uh, this is the calories what is the calories and um, calories or calorie how much calories it gives us that's we need to enter it over there and class name it's going to be with full height full text lg bg transparent outline none order order not border border none and placeholder text gray 400 So that should display the calories over here. Good. 
for or else what we can do is I'll better copy the same styles I think this font semi bold over that it's looking awkward and yeah this is pretty much the same typing something yeah so text color text text color that's the thing text text color now it looks pretty much same that's perfect now and after this division we need to have one more division and that is going to be our price so let me copy it and paste it over here okay uh, but we need to add some information types this is calories and this is price field and we didn't have the value over here value and on change event okay so here we will set the value as calories and set calories at e dot target dot value and here set price e dot target dot value okay so this will set the uh, oh, error over here price it should not supposed to be empty so that will brings the price over here so let's go ahead and change the uh, icon name so this is going to use attach money and that is going to be imported from here so that will displace the dollar sign over there and last but not least we need to add a button for saving the information and this where it is getting entered and this ending over here so right after this that's the main division and over here we need to bring that button so div class name flex item center with full and button will say type button class name uh, margin left zero initially but from medium device margin left auto margin left auto with full but for medium device with with auto border none outline none bg emerald 500 and px12 py2 rounded lg text lg text white on semi bold and on click it's going to call a function save details and that's also going to be a callback function for the time being it's going to be an empty callback function save the changes and actually we didn't add anything inside the button that's why it's displaying like that save and now you can see that so this is how that form will looks in the mobile screen and when you expand it and and this is how it looks in the big screen so that's exactly what we needed so this is looking awesome right so form it's completely looking inside and it's completely responsive to so the user can upload their new items through mobile screen and as well as through a laptop or tablet from anywhere okay so now all we have to do that form functionalities one by one and that's what we are going to do next
okay then so now let's start uh, uploading our details okay so let's go here and first let's upload the image okay so go here and inside here so well, first i'm going to say set is loading as true once the user clicks the upload button i'm going to say set is loading as a true okay and then we need to get that image file const image file is equals e dot target dot files in that we are going to get the zeroth index because we are not uploading multiple image we are just uploading single image only so and then i'm just going to say console dot log whenever the possible just console dot log it so that you can understand what you are working with and we need to get the event over here okay so let's go back here in the console clear it uh and control input okay it's because at the time we didn't give the state value right that's why so now um when i click it it's opening and let me go to the desktop image and let me choose any image from here it's loading and look at that so we are getting the that image complete information what is that image type and what is the size of the image and then what is the file name and all those things we are getting perfectly okay so now we need to make use of this image values and all those things okay so i need to get the storage reference which we already created in our firebase config in the firebase config we already added this storage reference we need to use this storage reference over there so let me close the loader and index.js data.js not anymore we don't need it okay so after here so const storage reference storage ref is equals we need to use a function called ref which is coming from firebase storage so import that package firebase storage it's imported and as well as then and storage actually the storage which we are getting it from firebase config from our own file storage and where we are going to upload it in the images uh, over here in the storage in the storage i created one folder right images over here we are going to upload it so do that so let's create a dynamic string images slash after this images i need to upload it that image with date dot now because i need to maintain the uh, those each and every image in a unique way right so that hyphen dollar image file dot name so we are adding the time string along with appending with our file name so that's the image name which maintains the unique name every single time okay so now we have the storage reference and now we need to upload this file to our um, firebase so while uploading if you want to calculate the progress bar on all those things that's also we can do it i'm going to show you that option only and you can do it whenever uh, even if you are going to implement that uh, firebase uploading progress and all those things okay so that's what we are going to do now okay so let's do it now const upload task const upload task is equals upload byte resum resum re resumable upload bytes resumable this is the uh, function we are going to use it from firebase storage and let's import it and then we are going to pass that storage reference which we already having in our hand and what file you are going to store it in that storage reference image file which we are already having in our hand and now to calculate your that uh, bytes how many bytes it's uploaded 
but in this case i'm not using any progress bar or anything in case if you want progress bar this code will work fine you can use that one upload task dot on on state once the state started changing this will throw three different function one that is a snapshot okay that is an function and another one that is an error that is also a function if there is no error then it will close the that download url that's the last option these are the three different function it will provides you on the snapshot okay the snapshot means every single time the video like uh, the image is getting uploaded at the time on upload progress when it's getting upload um you can say upload progress is equals snapshot dot bytes transferred divided by snapshot dot total bytes then multiply it with 100 actually you don't need to worry about how how i do know all these things you don't need to worry about it. everything is provided in the firebase documentation you just need to copy it and paste it from there okay even i did the same thing and then uh in the error if in case while doing is there any, is there any error is happening so what i need to do is i just need to console dot log that error but for error field we already created one right so set fields as true and set message as error while uploading try again so then we will show this emoji over there okay after this set alert status as danger okay then set timeout because we need to remove that alert for after four seconds it's need to be removed automatically so set fields is equals false and set is loading equals false both are false okay in case if there is nothing is happening if uh, no errors nothing anything is uh, everything is fine then get that download url from the upload task dot snapshot dot reference dot then that will returns a promise and that promise will throw the download url and that will that is our download url and that's what we are going to set it for our image asset set image asset download url and set is loading to false and set the fields true okay set the fields true and you just need to send a message as image uploaded image uploaded successfully and let's show this emoji and set alert status as success anyway we are not verifying it but here we will send it success set timeout 4000 set fields to false say the uh, changes now if everything is working fine just now i said everything is working fine now we got an error expected an assignment but there is a function call where Well, create container expected a function call but there is an assignment where I assigned mm.
let's wait a second open the console console it's not showing any error refresh it it's not going something is missing we missed somewhere oh come on here that's the thing come on my bad my mistake so now if i click this if i choose any image from here if i click open so now it's uploading actually okay so once it gets uploaded successfully you will get this message image app uploaded successfully and you will get that url so url uh, you are download url through that download url it's loading that picture over here so now all we have to do when i click this we need to delete this url that's what we need to do okay and let's do that and then and if you go to your firebase storage inside the image now you can see that image which is uploaded it's loading loading and look at that this is the image which we uploaded right now this is the time string when it gets uploaded and this is that file which is get uploaded right now and that's the file and that's the image we are seeing over here and now let's write a code to delete this image so deleting is just very straightforward just like the same is set as loading as false uh sorry we need to make it true and then const delete reference is equals reference from the firebase storage and we also having the storage object object and we are having the image asset that's our download url through the download url we will delete it from the uh, firebase so for deleting we are using the delete object method delete object method from the firebase storage and delete we are passing the delete reference to it so that will remove once it's deleted it will return the promise back and we will capture that promise and we will open a callback function and let's say set image asset as a null because once it's deleted that means once this function returns a promise means it, that image is deleted from the cloud so you need to set your image asset as a null then set is loading as false after that we just need to give an alert message copy this and paste it over here this time image deleted successfully okay so save the changes and now if i click this it's loading and it's showing image deleted successfully if i go here if i refresh this that image will not be there anymore look at that that image is deleted successfully okay so if i go back we are still inside the images folder only it's not deleting the folder but it's deleting the file which is inside that folder okay so our image upload and everything is perfectly fine and last one more thing that's what what we need to do we just need to upload the entire information that's what we are going to do now so inside the save details function i'm just going to say set is loading as true then i'm going to use the try and catch if there is any error i'm just going to capture that error what we can see we can copy from here console log that error and capture it and we will say error while uploading try again the same message okay and i'm just going to and uh, what we can do is you can see uh, if not title if there is no title uh, or okay if there is no title or not calories or not image asset or not image price or not 
category if any one of these is not there then we should return if any one of this is not there then what we are going to do is we are going to set the field we are going to throw that again the same message not console.log error set fields true and required fields must be filled you can you need to print the messages required fields can't be empty required fields can't be empty you need to upload that thing okay and set the alert message danger and everything if everything is fine it's up and running fine and all those things if everything is fine then open the else block inside the else block i'm going to create that data structure so const data is equals id colon date dot now that's the id it's going to be that's so that by that way we can maintain the unique id and the title it's going to be title itself and the image url image url image url it's going to be image asset and category not categories category it's going to be category itself and calories it's going to be calories itself and quantity initially we are setting the quantity as one and the price and i'm going to set the price itself so this is our data object okay all we have to do we need to save this item okay so later even in future if you are having a multiple uh, functions and all those multiple components multiple uh, actions uh, post or blog if you're creating for a website you need to save uh, the information so for saving it's just like a same coding only so what i'm going to do is in the utils function in the utils folder to save the firebase information so firebase functions and all those things we are going to uh, create a new file in the utils in the name of Firebase functions.js. Okay, so here we are just going to write a function to save that details to saving save the new item. So this is for saving new item. Okay, so export const save item is equals it's going to be an asynchronous function and then it's going to receive a data as the parameter and inside this function we are going to wait await set doc set doc is a function which is coming from firestore which helps you to set a new value even if that is a value is not there it will create it if it is already there it will update it and doc doc method we are going to use the doc method to create a new document okay doc and firestore so firestore is the object which is coming from our fire uh, firebase.config okay and then um what is the collection you are going to create we are going to create the collection food items if this collection is not there it will create one if the collection is already there it will opens that collection and insert a new document into that collection so date dot now so we are using the date not now as the that uh, collection id prop okay then data the data what we received we are pros, prop uh, we are sending that one okay and after this i'm just going to say merge merge m e r g e merge true okay so this is optional merging is optional in case if you are updating or if you are trying to later if you are adding one more uh, uh, field into it then you need to have this field otherwise it will throws that error at that time okay so firestore it's our object which is coming from our uh, firebase 
and food items is the collection name and this is the id it's going to be our that particular document unique id and this is the entire document data and it, we are just saying merge the document is it true why i'm saying this merge because if uh, we need to merge this document in future if you're trying to add one more field inside to it so it should be merged properly and actually that is uh these two it's not supposed to be here after the dog data wait a second fire store this is the dog doc is completing over here fine data then here no yeah now it's showing that true object yes so this is how it's supposed to be okay so actually I'm, i i am added these details wrongly this the doc function is completing over here after this doc function you need to supply the data okay so now the save item is done and now we need to use this method inside our create container once the data is created successfully we need to call that save item method and we need to pass our data which we created okay and if everything is going successfully so set the is loading and everything as a false and here let's say data uploaded successfully okay and also we need to have clear data function also so i'm just going to paste that set title null set image asset null set calories null everything is null 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 that's it okay everything is done so i just need to call this method right after here say the changes so let's try it let's say um mm, chocolate vanilla select the category and ice creams select it let's add that ice cream picture where it is this one it's uploading calories let's say 65 something that's too much but it's okay 65 price let's say 8.5 if i click save data uploaded successfully but the clear method ah okay oh this clear data is waiting why it's waiting because this is waiting because for the set timeout okay so that's it's and it's that's why it's it the clear data is waiting so what we need to do is instead of having the clear data over here print it over there itself okay call that method over there itself now let's make sure whether the data collection is inserted or not let's go to the firestore database and now let's have a look at it look at that firebase items and our detail is uploaded successfully so now our create item is working on so take your time and add much more products into it and i will show you how to fetch and all those things and that's what we are going to do next okay then so i just take some time and i upload updated uploaded few details over here so you just uh, upload few more details by using our form over here so we are done with this uh, adding details and let's go back to our home over here okay so now what i need to do is whenever i'm uploading the detail whenever i'm uploading the detail i need to fetch the detail from the cloud and i need to dispatch it to our container so that's what we are going to do now so to do that first i need to fetch all the details from the cloud so to fetch it i'm just copying it and then pasting it over here so i'm just created a function an asynchronous function i'm getting all the details from this collection 
okay i am querying that collection actually for set uh, adding new detail we use set doc and getting new, all the details from that we are using get docs method okay so the get docs method will helps you to get all the details from the all the collections from the firestore database we are querying the collection okay we are querying the collection with the reference of our firestore this is the exact same firestore from the same collection that we used to save and we are ordering it by the id in the descending order so latest added products will be at the top and we are returning each and every document one by one so save the changes what is the error query collection order by it's not added okay so query added imported collection imported order by imported save all the changes now that error is gone okay so now what we need to do is create container where is our data is saving so before moving into that first let's open up and go to our components what is the context provider we having context 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 over here in the context providing we having value not this one uh, here context provider value user only we having the user information so now we need to add uh, initial state value for our um, what is that for our uh, uh, database values from our firebase so we need to add the initial state and reducer for it okay so initial state like uh, for uh, food items initially it's going to be null only initially the food items it's going to be null only so let's go ahead and create that let's go to the initial state where it is the initial state context initial state uh, initially the initial state what we are going to do food items we are going to define it as null initial state of the food items it's going to be null and in the reducer i'm just going to say set underscore food underscore items colon set underscore food underscore items okay and let me copy this case and paste it over here if this case is equal to set food items then food items Food items copy it from here food items equals action dot food items that's the reducer you need to set okay so action dot food items we will collect it and we will save it over here okay so then now after here reducer is done says now if you go and verify it in the context provider we have values and we have food items as null so what i need to do is we need to load that information to at two places we need to dispatch it in two places one initially when the app is getting loaded at the time we need to load the information and two whenever we are saving the detail we need to um, dispatch that information so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to use the const and the object and dispatch dispatch use state value okay use state value and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a function const fetch data fetch data is equals asynchronous function asynchronous function and await get all food items and that will returns a promise dot then dot then and we will get the data from it 
okay and we will console dot log console dot log that data and let's see let's keep it console nothing is here say the changes uh we didn't call it we need to call it in the user effect that's why i'm looking call it in the inside the use effect function this should load only one time and fetch data and it's showing error i think so expected a function instead of an expression it's a function now there is no issue and look at that we got all the details from the firebase so it's working perfectly so data we are receiving all the details and the functions and whatever we written it's working now now what we need to do is instead of console dot logging it i'm just going to dispatch it to type colon action type dot set food items food uh, initial state food items i will destructure that object food items colon data and once i save these changes once i save it now it will be refreshed and look at that 25 items it's been added to your cart if i go to the components and look at that this is all the food items now we can use this food items whenever wherever we needed it okay so just like the same way what i need to do is i need to do the same thing same code copy the same code copy it from copy it go to cart container and i will paste it right over here okay and app.js copy this again and we will load it over here use state value fetch item so whenever you are saving the detail once it's successfully saved i'm just going to call this fetch data one second okay so if you add a new data over there showing you state value get on items action state oof lots of error add it add it and you state value import it so we imported all the necessary values so now whenever you uploading a new data this will add that to our cart uh, what is that that uh, context provider our state provider so the new data will be updated so that your uh, food uh, cart will so your food items everything will be updated and now as we expected we having all our uh, data in our hand so next what we need to do is we need to bring our um, that uh, details with, with a nice ui component so that's what we are going to create next okay then so now we are finished with the home and let's move on to our uh, next section so next section uh, what we need to do is we need to load all this item so if you have a look at it if you are having a look at it our context provider over here in this context provider you can see that we having some food items over here right so i need to fetch all the fruits okay fetch all the fruits and i'm going to display the fruit sections right below it that's what we are going to do next so let's go ahead and create a new section let's close this home container and let's open up our main container over here and right after this home uh, i'm going to create a new section section and class name and uh, <coughs> it's going to use the full width 
okay is the full width and for instance padding 4 and bg let's see let's give some color for the time being bg blue or something and let's see how it's reflecting over there okay so this is looking perfect so section is loading over here exactly where we wanted it and that's no issue with that it's working absolutely fine so then what we need to do is for that i don't need any padding because we are already having enough padding over there then inside here i'm going to remove this so first of all i'm going to create on division and this is going to be width full and flex item center justify between okay and inside this i'm going to create a paragraph tag and this paragraph tag is going to be class name and it's going to use that class like uh, uh the property what i'm going to use for that thing is just a moment what we can say come on what this okay so let's say that uh, we can say what kind of color we can use for it okay so we use this and okay so text large we'll use the text large and font semi bold okay and then um, we can say transform it to uppercase so uppercase and then uh, we'll make this as a relative position relative okay so what i'm going to do is <clears throat> i'm going to add over here like our fresh and healthy something like for the for the time being let's see how it's looking okay so our fresh and healthy fruits and i think so i'm going to use instead of uppercase capitalize that looks much better and text uh heading color okay so make it a little bit bigger to excel okay that's pretty much done that's okay and what we can do is um this menu is okay and then what i'm going to do over here so then uh right after this i'm going to have one effect under this like a line something like that so we are going to design that one now so for that i'm going to make i'm going to add up a certain number of lines of codes utility classes over here so we are going to create a before event so before it's going to be absolute position first we make that before as absolute then uh, i'm going to make before rounded lg that should be a rounded line okay then i need to make the content also before content display so like this is what is this display content and this is what we need to use display content none okay and then uh, let's bring before that width it's it's going to be like 20 and before that height is going to be one one four pixels that's more than enough and after that what we need to do is where we need to place that before bottom is zero and before left zero and before bg orange 500 and transition all ease in ease out duration seconds let's check it out it's not coming up over here 
then what might be the mistake we made before event is not triggering maybe it's because of this i think so before yeah before content so now we can see that we're having that line over here okay so what we can uh, do is um instead of using this plain orange over here i'm just going to use the gradient vg gradient to right to bottom right or to right itself that's enough bg gradient to right from orange from orange light orange to orange 600 and i'm going to make it with 32 is not there i think so that's why okay then this is pretty much good instead of margin bottom zero i'm going to say minus four. multiple tabs opening working with multiple tabs it's always complexity okay so four is too much so what we can say is um okay that's pretty much done then what i'm going to do is um this section before the section let's say add let's margin let's add some margin top and bottom six so now we have that enough space over there okay fine and after this i'm going to create one more division and inside this division we are going to have that uh, two different icons so class name and the class name is going to be flex itself flex item center and this should be uh, hidden by default it should be uh, hidden that means for mobile screen we don't need to display with but from the uh, large screen for the tablet also we don't need to display from the large screen and it's need to be or let's or let's say for medium screen itself we'll say for medium screen it should be flex item center and that gap should be between it it's going to be three okay so inside here we are going to keep two divisions div and div and we are going to write the common styles for this div and let's say class name and width it's going to be e 32 pixel height e 32 pixel rounded md or lg rounded lg and then bg orange 100 flex everything item center justify center let's save the changes and have a look at it and this is that two different buttons inside here we need to load that uh, two different icons okay so for this um what we can say is initially we'll keep the color as 300 and on over we'll change the bg orange to 500 and cursor is going to be the pointer cursor and after that uh, transition all duration 100 ease in ease out on over we need to add shadow lg save the changes now you can see that when i'm hovering it it's having this nice little animation over there so that's perfect and as well as what we need to do is i need to add a little bit framer motion for that button click so let's import that import motion and over here hold your control click alt key click it click it and motion dot everywhere motion dot then hold your alt key and click here and here uh, what i'm going to say for this is uh, why tap animate sorry not animate while well, tap scale is going to be 0 0.75 
okay and let's have a look at it how it's looking so when i click it it's have that little button wiggle animation okay so that's perfect now it's looking absolutely fine so we need to load the two different icons so for that we are going to import the icons from import md chevron okay it's not showing so react icons slash md material design and that means so here we are going to say chevron left md chevron white these two icons so over there where it is over here and over here enter so let's say md chevron left and let's say class name uh text lg or text lg or text base itself and text base and text white save the changes and this is the icon i think we need to increase the size now lg okay this is pretty much enough and let me change this to chevron right and now look at that we have that uh, both the different icons over here okay so now what we need to do is i need to uh, bring the uh, row over here a complete row container and that component should be reusable component so every time i'm not supposed to create uh, same number of uh, lines of code for again and again because for the menu also we need to use that same thing again so that's what we are going to do next and let's go ahead and create that one okay then so now let's create a new component called row container so let me create a new component called row container dot jsx fine and let me close this initial state reducer we'll open it later when we needed it and what we need to do is go to index.js and let's over here so let's export that one as a default one so default as row container container row container from dot slash where is the row container over here so save it and here rafc save it okay and let's go ahead and import that one right over where it is uh, this is the division it's closing over there and right after this division exactly over here okay so i'm just going to use that row container let's see how to use this row container in for uh, for a multiple purpose so what i'm need to, going to say is um if for menu it should not overflow like um, we, we need to make every every single content inside it as a flex wrapper and but for fruit section i need to make a scrollable content for only for an x-axis so user can scroll left and right and they can see it so we need to use the same component for both different functionality so what we can do is i'm going to set a flag value over here flag it's going to be initially i'm supplying it as a true if this value is true it will act as act for fruit section if the value is false it will act for the main menu section okay so let's keep it in that way so then uh, let's go back to our row container and over here we have in that row container and let's say uh, first let's add some styles for it width it's going to be full width and margin top and bottom i'm going to say four because top and bottom we need some space uh, let's add a little bit more space itself well okay so this is uh, pretty much enough so then what we are going to do is inside this now this will take the complete width and if i'm adding bg black or something if i'm adding some content you can see that complete width over there okay so it's taking the complete width and <laughs> so for this uh, i will make it as a dynamic string okay so dynamic string and i'm going to destructure that flag over here flag i'm going to destructure that flag okay so um if if there is a flag value it should 
act in a different way mm. what we can say is um if there is if there is a flag value then return overflow sorry this should be question mark if there is a flag value then overflow x will make the overflow x as scroll otherwise will make it as overflow x hidden overflow x hidden okay so let's change the changes so now we can see that scroll bar over here and what we can do is instead of writing this line over here all right writing this line over here um think 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 what we can do uh if we are writing it over there that will be okay we'll try we'll try later in future if there is any changes we will update it back okay so here now uh, i will send the fruits details and i will send the data to over here to this component so what i need to do is i need to uh, create uh shall we create a separate like here next what we need to do is we need to create a division so class name and uh, that division inside this division let's say for for this minimum width minimum width i'm going to say around like uh, 350 pixels okay and height for the time being i'm just saying 20 and bg overlay let's see the changes okay so it's taking complete width y width fifty. okay so this is the card width over there and if I am removing this black color so this is how it looks and if I'm adding a little bit shadow shadow MD so now we can see that thing and backdrop filter backdrop blood back drop blur lg so it will be blurred at the back side and now we can see it and let's see how it's looking in the mobiles love mobile view also because we fix the minimum width right so we will see that minimum width how it's affecting the 320 pixels so it's taking it overflow because of the minimum width so what we can do is um so it's, if it is going okay so maximum like we can say 350 350 pixels for mobile screen like minimum 350 or if you take it any mobile view okay this is the mobile it's taking it's, it's scrolling so what we can say is so for for the For normal screen, take the full width, full width from the medium screen, take the width as 350. So that will take the full width. Now it will not overflow. You can see that it's over here. Okay. So if I'm changing the color like a little bit, for the time being, I'm just changing the color. Later, we'll see what color we can fix for it. I'm just giving now blue color. So now you can see that it's, it's over here when i'm expanding this one and you can see that it's perfect it's absolutely fine so let me bring it in the right side 
and keep it side by side okay and it's taking the mobile full responsive hmm okay that's fine okay so inside here i will bring this to right side so inside here now what we need to do is we need to load we need to load a picture okay so to loading a picture how we can design that thing like um uh i can say we'll keep the picture over here and Mm, 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 mm. Mm, what we can say okay we'll keep on division inside it div class name uh width full width take the full width flex and flex uh item center justify between inside here i'm going to load the image tag image so for image for the time being i'm just going to my context provider i'm going to copy that uh, as any image link from there where it is context provider values food items any any food item so what is this okay this is an ice cream so let me copy this URL, and we will use it for time being over here instead later instead of hard coding it we will change it later so now this if i save this let me remove this color bg me remove it so it is loading that picture over here so and i'm going to remove the height also height auto instead of hard coding the height let's remove it so now it's loading that picture over here but instead of this uh, this much of size what i'm going to say class name uh, width i'm going to say as 40 i think this is more than enough right so width it's more than enough this is pretty much uh, looking good width like this and after this i'm going to bring division class name and uh, that's the uh, class name it's going to be uh, like what we can say mm, you can say the width us width 10 height 10 rounded full bg red or pink Say the changes i think that is color is a little bit odd so let's go for red okay that's perfect and uh, that's too big so let me reduce it a little bit eight okay so inside this what i'm going to do i'm going to add a bucket icon okay so even though now what we can say for uh, full screen we don't need a complete 350 pixels width 225 but why it's taking still i don't know why it's taking full width over there this is I'm not sure why still it's taking full width come on two twenty five pixels oh actually we are in a mobile view right <laughs> uh god three hundred okay so this is perfect now then after this I, what i need to do is i need to make this picture a little bit at the top so minus empty eight little bit it's moving up above a little bit but it's uh, hiding it from its container the wrapper container it's pushing out 
so instead of margin top of for this one we will add it for this one so now you can see that uh, picture okay and we will add for this one too also so now we have the container and that picture everything is over here and it's the picture is now a little bit at the top and i don't need this shadow anymore okay for the later we will if we want we can add that shadow okay so this is now okay inside this let's bring the cart icon so for cart what i'm going to do is for the cart what we can say is um where is the react react icons md design so actually we added the basket right basket uh, okay we'll use the same thing we add that icon import basket react icons slash md file and here i'm just going to say that md shopping basket slash class name it's going to be our text white color save the changes and let's have that look and let's pull it right it's over there so let's bring it in the center so flex item center justify center set changes now it's in the center over there and we will add cursor pointer okay perfect and on hover let's add some shadow effects for this medium so when i'm adding hover so that will add that shadow effects over there and i'm going to import the motion import motion from up oh, spelling mistake import motion m o i t import motion and hold your alt click alt and click alt key and click motion dot then after here while tap, same thing scale colon 0.75 perfect okay and for this also motion dot and when i'm while hovering this image i'm just going to increase the scale to 1.2 little bit like that perfect right looking perfect so when I'm hovering the picture, user can see that uh, scale little bit effect. And if I click this, that will have the nice wiggle effect. And after this, what we are going to do is, right after this division, I'm going to say div. Uh, this div is going to be, uh, we are going to have this. This should be width full. Width full. Okay. And flex item at the end justify at the end and if i'm having some paragraph something let's check how it's looking so now we're having that name everything over here cool that's what we needed so here what i'm going to say class name and uh, for the class name for this it's going to be text uh, text color text text color and font semi bold and text medium or lg 18 pixels so that's looking absolutely fine or you can say text base itself that's fine okay and for medium device it should be text lg say the changes okay instead of something i'm just going to say chocolate and vanilla so that will display that name over there and then after that paragraph section and this should be flex column as well flex column and gap between is going to be four 
and right after this i'm going to say <clears throat> like how many calories over here for this 45 calories or something so that should be small so instead of adding gap we'll add the margin so all this class name uh, margin top see the changes and do this bit oh, okay so text sm and then text gray 500 so this is more than enough okay and right after this now what we need to do is we need to have um, another uh, division the class name that is going to be flex item center and gap between us is going to be around eight or something okay and inside here i'm just going to display one paragraph tag and one span tag inside the span tag that dollar sign and the price field say 5.25 something it's displaying so class name it's going to be text lg Oops. Text LG and text text color text color or text heading color then font semi bold okay and for this I'm just going to say class name text SM text red color so like that okay so after this paragraph and we need to bring that um what we can say we don't need to have anything else i think so after that we are pretty much done so later if you want to add any option over there like view more or plus or anything else you can add much more information over there okay so if you want to add some ratings or anything you can add it over here so for the time being i'm just leaving it as it is okay so let's add some uh chord effects for it let's add some chord effect so bg overlay rounded lg save the changes and that's looking like pretty much over there and padding two. okay so padding two it's working fine and i think uh, we need to add some little bit color changes for it so instead of like that let's say gray 200 that is uh, too much 100 okay so what we can say is otherwise we will leave it as it is what we can do we need to figure it out a way for that um width we need to increase it a little bit on medium width i'm just going to say three fifty something okay 350 is too much so we can say 340 this is enough so for this on uh, let's add some drop shadow drop shadow to excel 2 excel is too much so we can say LG like this okay so this is uh, it's overall enough for us so what we can do is otherwise what we can say is for this we will add some background color BG orange like light orange shading over there okay that is too dark um instead of like that uh 
what we can do mm, instead of this dark orange we can say let's go to the html color code html color codes open it and over here let's move for a little bit mild orange shadings okay so let's choose a very light color just like this shading okay we'll choose the dark orange then we will change it by ourselves rgba 2511310 okay so let's go ahead open our tailwind config dot where is the tailwind config and over here our uh, row bg colon rgpa what is the color code we see 255131 255131 comma 0 comma 0 0.2 save the changes and let's go here and instead of this color let's say row bg save the changes and let's go back our app still it's too dark uh let's say instead of that 0 0.1 9 5 i think this shading effect is more than enough i think so this is more than enough okay so what we can say but uh, this is not taking the complete a uh, bit so ah uh, god come on give me some solution okay this is we don't need this i don't need this let's add some drop shadow for our image where is it where is it where is it where is it over here let me add some drop shadow excel and a little bit more Excel. okay so now we can see that uh, it's having some something like color changes over there <clears throat> and instead of this gray color I'm going to use the overlay itself okay so that's uh, looking perfect now that's what I needed so when I'm hovering it I, I can see that color changes over there that's perfect that's absolutely fine with that okay so <clears throat> what we can do is now uh, we can add some ratings also if you want otherwise if you don't want you can leave it and if you want to add some ratings you can, you can provide that stars and all those things over here so i'm just going to leave it as it is so this is more than enough if the user wants to add this to cart they can click this that will add the cart item over there okay and let's make the image a little bit bigger where it is instead of width like this we can say uh, 30 to something no, already we added 40 right so instead of 48 I think that is too big 44 I think that's now 40 itself it's enough I think so okay 40 itself it's pretty enough so next what we are going to do is we are going to uh, loop map it with our original data instead of hard coding with the information we are going to map all those things and that's what we are going to do next okay then so now let's fix this um, scroll view and all those things so let's see let's bring this with our dynamic data what we can do is let's go back to the main container and let's bring that dispatch value so const open the object food items comma dispatch dispatch equals use state value we'll get that item over here 
So when you are fetching this item, what we need to do is we need only the information what we are supposed to get, right? So we need only a very, um, what, what is that? We need only the fruits information. So we don't need all the informations from there. So already we collected all the details that we are having in our food items. So what I'm going to say is like, um, I'm going to call, I'm going to filter it. I'm going to filter it for, I'm going to filter and supply that record to our, um, our row container. So to do that, what you need to do is, um, just a moment. Wait a second, just a minute. Okay. So all we have to do, uh, we need to filter it and we need to supply that new item. So I will apply that new item over here. So let's say data, it's going to be first. Let me check whether everything we are getting the all the details over here or not. So I will save the changes and let's go here. Let's destructure that data and let's console log it. Console dot log that data. Absolutely, it will work fine, but we are making sure twice. Yep, it's working fine. So we are getting the details and everything it's working fine so in it's instead of loading all these details we need to filter it only the information is what we need so to do that what i'm supposed to do is from here i'm just going to add if that is a fruit, fruit items then filter okay i'm going to use the filter method filter get the detail okay so n dot category so inside if you go back to the console inspect console array if you expand it we having this category copy this category n dot category that should be equals to ice cream not ice cream where is the fruits 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 over here so we need if, it's, if that category is equals to fruits then supply that particular data alone so let's see let's save the changes and now look at that we're having only the fruits details so now we successfully filtered the detail and we need to map all those informations so now let's go back over here so instead of hard coding this detail instead of this what i'm going to do is I'm going to say if that is data and data dot map item okay paste it and for each item we need to supply the unique key key so key is going to be item so save changes so that is some issue I think so Uh, actually that is not an issue what is the issue is instead of this functional bracket we need to use the component we are going to render a component so we need to use the normal brackets only then type the key information key item dot id so save the changes and look at that so that is a problem what is the problem instead of overflowing it's it's coming down it's because we didn't add the flex over here flex item center see the changes and look at that now it's overlapping with each other i expected this because we need to add the minimum width for here so when it comes to normal screen okay minimum width is going to be 300 pixels on the same way in the medium screen minimum width is going to be 340 pixels so now you can see that it's getting overlapped so we are successfully getting this over here and there is no gap between it so let's add some gap so gap p inside the each layer that should have some gap and let's maximize it oops let us maximize this and let's see and look at that so this is what we needed 
right okay so uh, and let's see how this flag value is working over here okay so if i'm changing this to false if i'm changing that to false what's happening see now the overflow is hidden but i can't see this detail over here so what i need to do is if that is that is no flag value overflow x will be hidden and add flex wrap also it should automatically push the remaining content to the next row like this so now we can use the same component for our menu and for our container also that's absolutely fine and let's change this back to true and it's coming back over here and we don't need that scroll bar so scroll bar bar scroll bar actually i think i didn't add that plugin for so for tailwind for adding any plug uh, scroll bar so tailwind uh, scroll come on scroll bar npm and if you click this so we need to add this uh, in our project so copy this and let's go to our terminal yawn add tailwind scroll bar so let's add this package and we need to add one more thing we need to add this line in our plugins so copy that one go to your tailwind configuration and scroll down and you can paste it over here so that will give just all the required properties that we needed for our uh, scroll bar customizations and all those things so it's installing so still it's installing let it install once it's done and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll customize those things see the changes okay so it still it will throws the error because the package is not yet added over here i don't know why it's taking this much long for me maybe because of my internet issue so it will throws the error absolutely come on why it's taking this much time install okay so now it's moving on okay now it's done so let me refresh it still it's showing error let me check one more time require okay so we added that let's stop the server and rerun it stop it and rerun it come on why it's taking this much time i'm not sure mm, starting the development server and it's loading up we'll close the previous one it's loading still it's loading oh god okay that is no issues now it's successfully rendered that's absolutely fine and now what we need to do let's go back to the row container and over here scroll bar none now you can't see that scroll bar over there and if you hold your shift key and if you're scrolling the scroll will work but the problem is we need to do it with triggering actions when i click this that should be done so that's what we are going to do now to do that what we need to do is we are going to use the scroll offset okay so we are going to use the scroll offset and uh, for those things like uh, we actually need to do uh, scrolling informations <clears throat> we need to get the scroll informations and all those things so let's be let's do that now and so what i'm talking about is if you search for scroll left on click we search for that we can find this one element scroll left web api so they provide you how to scroll it on those things so over here on the button click we'll get that container we will scroll it left 
to our to that particular certain number or any any number or anything else okay so we are going to use this scroll left before that we need to get that container not uh, that uh, divisions we need to get this entire container so let's go ahead over here okay so um where it is where it is um this go here this is that row container we need to add that style in our uh, main container because here only we having those two different buttons so for this i'm going to create a reference or so reference or reference so reference i think so if i'm adding a reference for this it will work or not i'm not sure let's see reference equals we'll create the reference for it so over here we are going to use the refer const row container ref, row container ref using use ref we are going to use that and we will pass this row container ref over here as a prop a row container spelling mistake row container as a prop Okay, and we will destructure it over here as a ref and we will assign that ref over here reference is equals row container okay so now on here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function const okay I'm going to create a function called scroll const scroll is equals scroll offset i will send a value over to this function okay so ref uh what we can say is row container ref dot current dot scroll scroll left this is the l capital so this is what we are going to use copy this scroll left uh plus equals scroll offset whatever the value i'm i'm sending just add it and then do do that value according to it but over here how to click it over here well this is a chevron left right for this division on click on click i'm going to call a callback function so this is previous so i need to send the reverse value scroll if you want to go back to the previous scroll minus um, 200 and if you want to move right on click call back function scroll plus 200 let's see whether it is working or not if I click this nope it's not moving maybe it's not taking the reference and mm, 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 mm. it should take the reference so dot log row container let's see what's happening f12 cannot read the properties of undefined this is the issue we are getting okay so if i click this we are getting the issue for undefined value we can't get that row mm. So what we can do is maybe instead of um, sending it like this, um, we will set the scroll value. We having the reference over there only, right? Instead of passing the reference over through here, we will create a value 
what we can do is uh, use uh, wait a second what I did oh my bad I think I made a mistake so here I'm sending the prop as a reference so I should assign that reference only over here refresh it and the data is getting loaded still I'm getting issue cannot read the properties of undefined oh god okay let's delete it delete this so this is not working so what we can do is we'll send the scroll value directly to that then on click whenever I'm clicking this I will use the state uh, we'll create a we'll delete this over here and we'll use the state use state snippet scroll set scroll initially it's going to be zero okay and we will change this to value scroll value scroll value initially the scroll value is going to be zero and set scroll value and even though we don't need this uh, method also we don't need this use effect and scroll value to so right under it whenever that there is a changes in the scroll value and what we need to do is instead of here set scroll value to and set scroll value to this and I will pass that scroll value over here. Scroll value. See the changes. And I will get that scroll value over here. And use effect. scroll value whenever there is a changes in the scroll value okay so what we need to do is um so we need to create a reference for this ref is equals row container copy it and let's create that use reference const row container is equals use ref okay use ref and then now over here inside this so row container dot current dot scroll left plus equals scroll value save changes use state is not defined where it's we are getting that error we are getting that error over here so let's import the use state so that issue is now solved data is loaded now if i'm clicking it you can see that our data is moving right awesome perfect so what we need to do is and moving it's moving back and forth it's working fine but the problem with this is it's not moving smoothly so what we need to do is we need to add scroll behavior smooth scroll behavior uh, smooth or uh, scroll smooth now it's moving smoothly look at that so we successfully done okay so now this is scrolling effect is working absolutely fine even if you scroll left and right hold shift hold shift key and move you can scroll up and down and you can scroll by using this option itself okay 
and if it is going to the mobile screen if it's going to mobile screen and that scroll effect we don't even need that so this will move smoothly as we expected okay fine so we are pretty much done over here then what we need to do is we just need to change these details and we need to remove this console log because otherwise it will be every single time it will show this console log over here let's open any one and now let's change this hard coding everywhere wherever we are hard coded that information we just change that information okay so let's go here and first thing we need to change the image instead of hard coding this image change it open the dynamic string and over here we need to get item item dot image url so it should be always question mark because we don't need to get any undefined error so use always question mark over there because sometimes it will take time to load the detail at that time to avoid undefined error we'll use that so that's good now then we need to bring the title what is the title over here item question mark dot title and how much calories so we having that calories information over here copy it and item question mark dot calories and price information where it is price instead of this item question mark dot price and then yeah we are done so we need to remove this console lock remove it clear the console and let's save the changes and look at that we got our detail over here all the pictures how cool it is right so everything is absolutely working fine and that's perfectly all right and you can see that there is some size variance uh, changes in our uh, card that is because we didn't fix the height now it's a time to fix the height for our card so how it's looking in the mobile screen mobile screen also we having the same issue so we didn't fix the height so let's fix the height so that our design everything will look uh, perfect so let's go here and instead of this height that should be height let's say 150 150 is too too low height should be 300 if you give 300 that will be a perfect square so let's say height will be um 250 pixels instead of making height as an auto we'll fix the height 250 pixels is too much 200 that is you can't see these details and everything over here so what we can say Mm. Mm, 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 mm. we can why this height issues is happening actually it is not supposed because of the image i think so some images are small and some of them are big right maybe because of that only we are getting this issue So what we need can do is 225 pixels. I think 225 pixel is perfect. Okay, but still we having some unwanted spaces and all those things. So we can uh, adjust it. No issues. No issues with that. So it's loading. So that's all we needed. So it's loading. 
and for here maybe we can add some ratings and all those things okay so currently we didn't add any ratings but if you want to uh, perform that ratings and all those things you can add that uh, ratings options and everything okay so what we can do now for this is justify between flex card this is the division and this is the item flex and it's already image actually uh, we didn't add flex for this i think so flex flex column and item center justify between same changes and now every single card is perfectly at the bottom that's absolutely fine okay even when it comes to big screen wait a second now let me adjust the height instead of giving the height as um instead of fixing the height as 250 pixels we'll give it auto once again and we will check how it's looking well still the size is it's not working fine so we'll keep it 225 pixels but now actually you can see that we have a clean design so what i'm saying is this everything is in the bottom over here so that's looking uh, perfect absolutely fine so we successfully designed the fruit section and uh, this triggering event everything is working fine so when i click it it's working fine when i'm clicking here it's also working fine so totally everything is working fine now so all we have to do we just need to move on to the next menu container we have to design the menu container okay so we already have this card just we have to design it and we have to load our detail that's all we need to do so that's what we are going to do next okay then so we successfully completed our root section over here so now all we have to do the next our main menu container that's what we are going to do do now so i made few changes over here for this card so i didn't change they didn't have much changes i just adjust their width and height uh, for medium i just make it 300 and 300 for uh, normal i just made 275 and height as 175 so this is the changes which i made okay i didn't after that i didn't change anything so let's see how it looks in the mobile view also in mobile view this is how it looks in the mobile view okay so awesome that's looking perfect and everything is looking so far so good so then what we have to do is now let's move on to our um main container so this section is pretty much done so right after that we are going to create one more section just like that okay so let me copy this and let me paste it over there and uh, let's name this section uh, this is going to be nothing and this section is going to be our menu section right so for menu mm, what we can do is okay so let's create a menu container separately new file menu container .jsx and instead of this we will load that menu container over there and where 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 we don't need menu container or a fce okay so then and in the index.js let's copy this and let's export it menu container menu container copy it let's it see the changes see the changes and let's bring that menu container over here see the changes and that brings our menu container right over here okay so let me copy this styles from here this is the style we are going to use it so let's copy that style and let's go to the menu container and inside this we are going to load that section okay and i'm going to say menu container menu so that will load the menu over here so now we got the menu as we expected and for this i'm going to say the id id as menu awesome so we are pretty much done for this menu section and now what we need to do is this is going to be uh flex 
inside this i'm going to create a division and that division is going to be class name with full width of full and flex flex column okay item item center justify center and here i'm going to bring from the main container i'm just going to copy this paragraph exactly copy it i'm going to paste it here i'm just going to say our hot dishes dishes save the changes and that will bring our hot dishes over here okay so this in instead of keeping it like over where it is bottom and left to zero i'm just going to move it a little bit further inside a little bit more still more i think now this is perfect so our hot dishes it's ready okay or here it's in the left side and here it is in the um So I'll push this margin right auto. So I'll push this to the left side itself. Perfect. So we will keep it then as it is zero. And instead of width, I'm just make it 60. That's perfect now. That's looking fine. And this is also looking fine. Okay, so our menus is ready now. So next what we need to do is for uh, each and menu we need the filter. So we are going to design that filter okay so let's create that filter now and that filter it's going to be like uh, overflow it should not overflow and it should avoid the overflow and all those things so we need to write a quite a same menu just like what we created for this structure over here okay so that's what we are going to create now let's do that okay so right after where it is right after this section uh, sorry this one i'm going to create one division inside this division and um, this division is going to be class name and width i'm going to say width full and flex item center justify the item in the start okay and for large device justify the item in the center and the gap between each and everything is going to be eight and okay so later if we need margin top also we can add it and then overflow x scroll scroll and scroll bar we don't need it so scroll bar none and the padding it's going to be a uh, padding we don't need anything so that will be over here and inside here what i'm going to do is I'm going to um, create the each and every division. So let's create the divisions first. Then we will uh, write those styles and all those things. So div. Okay. So this div is going to be class name. And the class name, it's going to be, um, let's say, group. We'll make, we'll make it as a group. Over. Uh, first, let's add the background styles uh where it is background um background 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 what color we can give background uh bg gray let's say gray 400 and something we'll see we'll check out or we'll add bg white bg white and and then width as 24 minimum width as 94 pixels okay and then height is going to be 28 that's a pointer rounded lg okay and then shadow lg shadow lg or drop shadow lg Drop shadow shadow lg and then flex flex color 
gap in between is going to be three item center justify center duration 150 transition all ease in say the changes so that will create this style over here actually we don't we can't see that uh, that particular shadow effect why it's because inside this we need to add some margin effect instead of this we'll make my will make it adding py6 top and bottom so now we can see that we have the equal space and also we can see this uh, card complete back end design also bg white is pretty good so card overlay that's not looking fine so let's create one more thing copy the card overlay and paste it over here make this card and change this to 8.6 still it's not looking good 8 255 255 oops my bad wait a second i didn't give that style over here where it is this is going to be hard that's why it's not changing anything hard so what i can do is 0.6 I think now I can see that is as a card separately or 0.8 okay I think this is pretty much good now okay so we use this itself okay and then in the menu container instead of um, where it is um, shadow LG um, menu main menu menu container menu container drop shadow LG let's add Excel and let's check it out how it's looking okay so that's looking perfect absolutely fine so this is what we needed right so then inside this uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring okay inside that i'm going to bring like uh, a separate division one more division and then that is going to be div okay so class name and width is going to be 10 height it's going to be 10 and rounded full and bg uh bg red bg red 400 or 400 say 500 okay and then uh on group over i'm going to make bg hard and flex item center justify center okay and for this uh, about division for this division when i am hovering it it's need to change over bg red 500 say the changes so now it looks like this when i'm hovering it it will change the color and it's looking perfectly all right that's looking perfect so instead of red can we change in some other color let's see let's say pink 700 no that's not looking great red 700 that's also not looking great red 400 then uh what is the color we used for cart row container red 600 is the same color pattern then okay so that's better now it's okay it's looking good then what we need to do is 
inside this i'm going to display an icon inside that i'm going to display an icon and that icon is going to be uh like uh, what we can say like um mm, it's a food icon i will i only cons i only can so import i will fast food from react icons flash so actually you can use separate separate pictures for it but i don't have any pictures categorized category wise pictures so for that i'm just using the common icon for everything so class name it's going to be uh text let's say uh text color text color okay and when we are grouping group over when we are gro you be group over text card color okay and let's see what is happening minimize it okay so it is reversed so we need to use this over here and here we need to use the card then now it's it will find normally it's white if i hover it it looks like this okay so it's absolutely fine now it's working perfect and the, let's say text lg make it little bit bigger so now you can see it much more clearly and after here uh, this uh, particular division after this division i'm going to create a paragraph tag and that paragraph tag is going to be our category name so it's going to be our category name so if i'm typing something like category initially it looks like this so let me change some styles for these things class name it's going to be um text uh, lg i think text lg is too big i think so yeah text lg is too big so let's make it text base text base that is also a little bit bigger only text yes some okay that's perfect okay and then uh, initially it's going to be text text color and group over on group over it's going to be text card color text card Hello. Any changes? Okay, so that's fine. Actually, for cart, we use the cart color. I think so. Let me change the color for here. Cart number color. Ah, uh, both are looking same only. Okay, now it's fine. Okay, so text is not much visible. So instead of text card over here, I'm just going to say white so that I can see it much clearly. Perfect. Okay, so that's looking great now. Just we need to replicate these things. Okay, so for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a state because whenever you are clicking, we need to change. So use state. We need to change the active state, right? So use state snippet. Let's say um, what uh, what we can say filter filter set filter by default it's going to be chicken okay by default it's going to be chicken so and I'm going to render the detail dynamically inside everything whatever the detail we are fetching we are going to render it dynamically and use state it's not initialized initialize it save the changes. And now that will bring the value over here. Why it's every time it's happening this. Okay, now it's absolutely fine. So then what we have to do is in the categories in, in the data section, I need to, I'm having the category over here. Okay, this is the name we are going to use for filter URL param. So let's go to our menu container and paste it chicken. By default, it's going to be chicken. And I'm going to bring the categories inside here and I'm going to re-render that complete category 
from here for this for this entire division for this entire division it's going to be re-rendered so what so what we are going to do we are going to bring the categories oh it's not showing did i exported it data.js okay let's import it first it's not showing automatically then let's import it import categories from double dot slash utils slash data then now it will displace that categories and if there is a categories and categories dot map inside the map we are going to get the each and every single category and we are going to render a component and that component is going to be our division which we created now then key is equals category dot id and name is going to be category dot name say the changes so that will brings these icons over here look at that chicken curry rice fish fruits and everything is over here and if i move it to small screen and let's see how it's looking in the small screen and that's looking absolutely fine it looks perfect right so let's go back here but the thing is when i'm clicking is i need to change the active state right so what i'm going to do that's why uh, what i'm going to do is over here uh, i'm going to check this state if the use state value is equals to that url param whatever the param value we are getting if it is equal to that value we'll change the state to active so we will make this style completely into a dynamic string and paste it inside again so here we are using this card right i'm going to check this i'm going to check if if the filter if the filter if the filter value is equals to if the filter values is equals to category dot url param name then change the color as car number color otherwise keep the color as card color so this way it will maintain the active state so let's uh, copy this term from here and if it is active we are making this right so what we need to do i'm going to type the same thing so let me copy it from here copy it first let's fix this one this it why i can't see it completely let's oh come on cut it delete the dynamic and bring the dynamic string paste it over here this we need to update if the filter is equals to um see if the filter is equals to category name then you need to bring the bg bg card otherwise you need to load bg card number bg color okay save the changes and let's see a new container and it's looking okay so here what we need to do we need to bring the uh, chicken color uh, we need to sorry sorry that text that text we need to change the text and where it is where it is where it is text 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 over here this is also so cut it change it and make it dynamic string paste it over here and this we need to update it automatically so let's copy this from here copy it and we need to replace this dollar filter if it is true 
we need to make the text color as white text white otherwise we need to make the uh, text color as text color okay and instead of bg card we will make it white itself because that card color is not looking good say we change this what did i change i'm trying to change this white over here okay this white okay so now it's white pure white over there and we need to change it for this one also cut it and make it as a dynamic string and instead of this we need to bring this delete it if it is true then text text color otherwise text white okay so now everything is looking awesome hover is working fine on hover it's showing light color y on hover where it is on hover over hover oh come on oh, over white now okay it's perfect absolutely fine okay cool so let's and for this let's add some shadow effect also for this icon so shadow LG. so now it's having some nice shadow over there okay so that's looking perfect cool okay so now let's verify it if i'm clicking it it's need to change the state actually our state is getting updated okay so let's see use state snippet sorry not use state use effect whenever there is a changes we need to re-render it right use effect function and the dependencies and i'm going to monitor the filter save the changes okay uh, and then i'm going to use the set filter method on click i need to change the filter method right somewhere where i'm going to set it here set filter sorry on click equals a callback function set filter it's going to be category dot url bar okay so now if i click this click this click this click this 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 that's looking absolutely fine okay cool so let's add some uh, motion what we need to do i think this state is not needed i think so yeah okay it's working fine so here import motion from framer motion and for uh, this filtering over here starting here and ending here motion dot okay so here it's going to be uh, while tap scale is going to be 0 0.75 or 0 0.6 it's absolutely fine actually why it's not doing it maybe it's because of this i think so a slight delay yeah it's because of that only so we'll make it 0 0.75 So that's why the same issue is happening over here also so let's go to our row container where is our main container and for this i added some transition effort and duration that's why let's delete it and now 
that button is looking absolutely sick and this is also looking awesome then what we have to do is we just need to bring up our row container our row container which we created and we need to load all the cards whatever we design so, and that's what we are going to do next okay then so now let's bring up our menu container over there so let's go here and where is our main container is loading this is our menu container inside this menu container we're having this division and that division is done and right after here we are going to create uh we are not fixing any height for this section that's fine and for this i'm going to say division class name it's going to be width full okay minimum height i'm going to fix it um height uh i'm going to say it's a, a screen because uh okay that's fine we'll see i don't need the height itself let's see with the full inside here we need to get that row container right row container and the flag value it's going to be false we're going to send the, the flag value as false and we are going to fetch the detail over here we are going to send the detail according to the filter so data is going to be uh, food items we need to fetch the food items from the in uh, const food items dispatch dispatch is equals used state value okay so we are getting now food items food items will be over there so food items question mark dot filter n n equals n dot n dot n dot n dot how we filtered it over here category if n dot category is equals to filter value just filter that value over here so now we need the use state to monitor we'll check we'll check first let's everything is loaded or not so our data is successfully get loaded and i think my problem with this is with this image over here and because it's having some background and all those things that's a problem for this image we need to apart from that everything is working fine okay so this it's having some background issue with this image okay we'll fix that cool now we are having the image over here but it's not aligned in the center right so what we need to do is let's go to our row container uh this is where we are designing it right flux wrap and we will make justify the content in the set so now everything is aligned in the center so in case if i am filtering it to curry and look at that our data is getting filter if it is getting if it is to fish we're having fish details over here and everything is loading perfectly so data is getting filtered actually it's get it's um, having some issues with this images and all those things okay so we need to fix this image so instead of loading this image directly over there what we can do is we can make it as an division what we can do is instead of we are loading this images directly over here right and this is that container right yeah this is that container what we can do is we can create a division div and we will put this into here and we will add this motion div for this particular division and we will add this while tab for this one and we will add all these styles for this class name and for this we will make width full height full object contain so i hope this might solve that issue 
will check nothing happened am i changing to row container only yes changing that to row container only but why it's not changing anything it's loading now picture everything is loaded inspect the element this is that division okay so let's go to the soft drinks why this is taking this much this is increasing this with the height why I just give an object fit overflow hidden for chicken and all those things here everything is fine but for drinks why it's not mm, come on why 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 it's happening why why it's happening why it's happening why it's happening we need to solve that issue how to rectify it um 160 and 160 here the width we are taking it as 10 rem width okay we didn't fix the height for it that's why uh, instead of this I will fix the height also 40 and now that's perfect right you get that so Red Bull and here and here here everything is perfect and for ice cream that is looking good and for chicken and that's also looking good except this image because of that background it's having some background I didn't notice that okay fine rise is looking good okay let's look at that so that is no detail for that filtering information if there is no detail then what we need to do is if there is no data if there is no data so why we are loading 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 here we are loading okay so here we are sending the information to our menu main container where it is we are filtering it here only so we need to add that style over here <clears throat> if this there is no data instead of this division it should display something else mm, so what we can do is so let me import actually in the image section in the image over here okay so later I will remove all these pictures because we already upload everything in the uh, in the cloud okay so anyway I, I you guys needed that picture that's why I'm just having all these things over here uh, even though you can download it in the description given below also okay so that's it so over here let me collapse this one collapse this one this one and I need to import that one import not found from dot slash double dot slash images folder slash not found dot SVG okay so if there is no data if there is data load this one if it's if it's not question mark you load this image load this image load this image and the source you need to use the sources not otherwise what we can say is 
I'll create one division over here. Div. And inside that div, I will paste this image and I will make this class name with full flex item center justify center. And right after here, I'm just going to create one paragraph tag. Um, items not available. Items not available. So if it is curry, it's displaying it. If it is rice, why it's not displaying that one? with it's having over here okay so i didn't give any size and the uh, high height and width for the not found section so class name is going to be height 400 420 save changes still it's not showing class with the full inside that division Wait a second, something is missing. What we are missing? If it is true, this data will be get loaded. If it is true, this will be loaded. Fine. If it is false, this need to be loaded, right? Image not found. But why it's not loading? Save the changes. Oh God, inspect. So if I click this, here this data is getting loaded. This data full, it's getting loaded. This is that complete division, right? This is that division. It's getting loaded. Inside this, we having the details and all those things. But if there is no record if there is no record why nothing is coming inside the style itself it's not showing over there i'm not sure why it's happening Justify center and overflow hidden justify center. This tile everything is loading, so let me say height 20. So height is loading, so height everything is loading. That's the problem, guys. So, what the problem with this is right now, if there is data. Okay, if there is, uh, let's see what's, what's the data we are collecting. Let's console log it. Console dot log it. Then only we can see console dot, dot data. I think it's written an empty array. I think so. Maybe because of that only. See, yeah, it's returning the empty array. That's why it's not showing over there. So we are getting an empty array. So I forget about it. So if the data dot the data and data dot length the data length is greater than zero so absolutely we will receive the data so we don't need it so data dot length if the data dot length is greater than zero look at that now we are getting it okay so if you have the data it will loads the data if you don't have data it will loads this picture but this is not supposed to be here that is supposed to be instead of 420 i'll make this to 300 something 340 and let me make this as flex column and let's add some styles for this class name text excel text heading color 
font semi bold save the changes and that looks like this and my to more than top and bottom let's add something cool right if you're having data that data will get loaded over here and if there is uh, if there is no detail if there is no data then it will load that particular information so currently it's loading this much of information only you need to add much more details for this and everything okay so it's looking good so we successfully did this filtering and all those things then what we have to do we have to do this uh, add to cart items and all those things that's what we are going to do so next let's start designing this cart design so that's what we are going to do next okay then so actually there is one issue uh, i faced when i was refreshing this page so what is that issue is uh, when i'm refreshing this page uh, we previously i deleted this so like what we need to do is add this because when the page is refreshing our data is our food item is null so if it is null we are not supposed to load it only if there is a data and that data like length is greater than zero then only we are supposed to load this information now even if i'm refreshing this there is no issues with that it's see it's initially it's showing that data dot uh, chicken that uh, it's not found then only it's loading that information right see now it's low it's loading perfectly and everything is working fine good so everything is working fine apart from here next now let's move on to the cart container so let's design the cart container now so let's open up our close this row container close this data.js menu container close it and let's create a new component called cart container cart container dot jsx rafce in the index.js copy this and paste it and let's import cart container and paste it over here save the changes and let's bring it up over here and right next then what we need to do is we need to load this cart container save the changes go to our main container this is where all our home and sections everything is getting loaded and right after this menu container i'm going to load this cart container cart container so this cart container is not supposed to be at the bottom it's going to be the fixed position at the top of every single thing so let's go here and let's add that styles for the cart container class name it's going to be width it's going to be full width for our mobile screen and from the medium screen it's going to be width 375 375 and height of the thing is going to be taking screen and bg i'm going to use the white bg only and drop shadow i'm going to use medium and flex flex column okay and after that uh it's going to be it is supposed to be fixed so let's just a moment give me a moment mm. So this is should be fixed in the top zero right zero save the changes and it's coming over here okay so our menu um like this our home menu it's all a top about top of all the layer right so that's why it's coming like this so that's absolutely fine we'll just remove the height and we'll add, we'll add this we'll start adding the container from here okay so what we can do is it's looking good now um then what i need to do is instead of screen height i need to take 100 vh i'm taking 100 vh so that's all same only both are same only i think so save the changes and let's looking fine and this should be top of everything right so z 
101. Z index 101. So now you can see that card container is the top of everything. Okay, so it's fixed. And then now what we need to do is inside the card container, we are going to load certain information. So let's load that all the information, whatever things we need to load it inside this um, card container. So here, first I need to bring that uh, back option. So let's bring that one. So div class name is going to be with full with the full flex item center justify between padding four okay and inside this i'm going to bring an icon so let me import that icon over here import this particular icon from react icons slash material design let's bring that icon here md outline space so class name it's going to be and text text color text three excel save changes and this is that icon we needed and anything which is coming inside this it's going to be cursor pointer that's absolutely fine okay so then what we need to do is um for this i'm just going to wrapping wrap it inside a division because we need to add that motion framer import motion framer motion let's add that one over here motion dot div space while tap scale 0 0.75 so when i click this it will work fine so that's looking good so then what we need to do is right over here after this i need to bring one paragraph and that is going to be our cart paragraph and that for that thing i'm going to add certain styles that nothing but class name i'm added the text text color text laws and font semi bold and after this i'm going to add one more division that is paragraph and inside that i'm going to say clear clear we are going to clear the cart and i'm going to refresh for refreshing i'm importing this icon refresh fill from react icons slash ri and let's keep it over there and let's bring it over here ri refresh fill okay for this i'm going to add a certain styles for this paragraph tag so i'm just copying it and pasting it okay so like this let's save the changes and it should come over here okay it's here and look at that this is the clear button and all those things but why it's not coming in the straight line Flex. Oh, actually, these things are supposed to be outside that division. This division. Everything is inside that division. That's why it was like that. Now everything is separately over here. So we need to do the same thing for that. Uh, this paragraph also. Motion dot paragraph. And let's copy this while tap option. And I'll give it over here. So now if I click it, it will work perfectly and it's having ease in and ease out. Let's remove this easing and ease out and all those things. That's looking perfectly fine now. So then what we have to do is we need to bring the next like uh, the bottom most section of our this. So that's six. After this, we need to bring the bottom most section and that bottom most section will need to be display only if there is a cart item otherwise it should display the not found section the cart is empty section over there so that we will do uh, first we will fix finish the uh, ui then we will add that one okay so 
let's add that style now for this division and let's mark it as this is bottom section and this division is going to have the class name as okay so class name it's going to be width to full height to full bg okay cart bg we need to create cart bg cart bg is going to be uh, i'll copy that uh, style i forgot to copy the styles in the tailwinds okay cart bg and all those things over here over here these are the colors we are going to use it cart bg and if i save the changes you can see that cart over here okay so this is that uh, color it's taking and then next what we need to do is we need to bring up another one let's say um i think this cart is too dark right okay okay that's fine we'll see and then uh, then what we need to do is uh we need to bring up the if there is if the style is not looking good we'll change it at fine we'll see first we'll design it then later we'll change the colors that's fine absolutely fine so then after here what we have to do is we need to create one more division here inside div and that division is going to be class name and that is going to use uh it's going to be fixed width and height because inside that we are going to say um very specific items only so that's going to be fixed width and height height 340 and minimum height for md on 42 okay so these are the things and let's see over there and here inside here we are going to load the items one by one each and every single item so for that let's design the cart item uh, inside this cart item so what we need to do is we need to bring the uh one more division div okay so class name so this is for each and every cart item this is for cart item inside the each and every cart item okay so here uh i'm just going to be that style and paste it okay so with and all those things these are the styles so just call, type all these styles and everything for saving the time i'm just uh, typing uh, copying and pasting everything okay so then uh, we need the some dummy image for right now so let's go ahead and copy that dummy image and this is that image you are all right so let's copy this and we will use it over here and then i'll paste it over here for time being and class name it's going to be this is the class name okay save the changes and that should display that uh, image over here and you can see that we're having that i and that the cart item design and you can see that we're having that image so for this image okay we are pretty much done so next after this image we need to bring the name section this is for cart item name section okay uh, we are going to bring the uh, name section name of that cart and all those things so let's create the div and class name so let me copy that and paste it here this is that thing then after here we are going to say paragraph and class name it's going to be text base text base and text gray 50 okay and inside here i'm just going to say chocolate vanilla oops chocolate vanilla save the changes and that will display the name over there so that's working fine and then after this we are going to dis display one more paragraph paragraph and that paragraph it's going to have a like styles like this and it's going to display the currency dollar 8.5 or something say the changes like this okay so then what we have to do is 
next to the button section we need to bring the button section and this is going to be the button section over here and for that button we are going to create a division okay and button and that button is going to be class name save it and inside this we are going to create a motion dot division button okay so like that it's going to be two divisions okay so for both we are going to add while tap while tap we are going to make it as 7.5 0.75 and the inside I'm going to add two different icons this is minus and plus and in between I'm going to display the quantity how much quantity it's going to be class name paste it and then here I'm just for initially I'm just going to say one let's say the changes enter enter so that you can see it clearly we need to import these two different icons otherwise it will throw error import from react icons slash bi bi minus and bi plus save the changes and it looks like this now we're having the plus over here and minus over here so you can see that the number and everything is over here you can see it clearly much more clearly okay so then what we can do is um we can actually this style it's looking too dark for this template i'm not feeling satisfied with this style mm but uh, we'll see we'll see the final output if it is looking great then leave it as it is otherwise we'll change the light theme itself okay so overall it's looking until this it's fine we'll see what see what happening and this is the cart item as i said now if i'm copying this and if i'm looping it for certain if i'm pasting it for a certain amount of time and that should copy the icons and you can see that it's scrolling now right so if i'm adding one more time that will be scroll perfectly okay so it's looking fine so we, below here we are going to display that uh, let me comment it only keep it only one button over here okay so now we're having only one cart item that's perfect all right and right after that uh where is the cart item is getting finished uh, bottom section okay cart item is now done now inside the bottom section so where is this so let me hide this cart item now okay over here so this is that division right so this is the cart item item section and this is each and every cart and right after this div this is our total section this is where we are going to get all the cart totals and all those things so this is cart total section so comment it whenever it's possible so that you will not get lost or anywhere whenever you're working with your designs and all those things okay so now let's design the cart total so cart total so div it's going to be class name and let me copy that style and paste it for saving the time paste it and inside this division i'm going to uh create a div okay and that div is going to be copy it and place paste it and inside this we are going to create two different paragraph one and two and both are going to have the same styles 
So hold class name, paste it. And this is going to be sub total. And this is going to be the total amount, let's say dollar eight point five something. And then let's copy this one more time. Paste it. And this is for delivery. Is there any delivery? And the delivery, I'm just saying 2.5. And right after that, we need to have one line to to let's say divider. We need to we need to divide the changes. So divider, this is the divider style. And then right after that, what we are going to do, we are going to create one more division div. And then I'll copy that class name. Class name, paste it, enter. And then I'm going to add two more paragraphs over here. Paragraph with the class name of paste it, I copy it, and I paste it again. Here it's going to say total, and here it's going to say the final amount. Okay, and right after this, we are going to uh, this is the cot total section inside the cot total section right after this division we are going to bring the button okay so button i'm just going to say i'm just copying it and pasting it this is that button we are going to create so finally it looks like this okay instead of this color i'm going to change it to orange uh 500 let's see okay so we'll make it bg gradient to right from orange 400 to orange 600 like this so that's looking perfectly fine so we successfully designed the cart now. Now all we have to do to integrate it with our cart context. We need to create a separate cart context and we need to trigger all those functionalities and everything. So that's what we are going to do next. Okay then, so we created the cart over here, but this cart is fixed at the top. We need to bring it only when we need it to be. So, and let's see how responsive it is. And if I am making it to mobile screen and that's taking the complete view, that's absolutely fine. It's looking great. It's we can see the complete cart. And when I clicking this, it's need to go back to its original form. OK, so what we need to do is uh, let's go here and let's open the initial state. And because cart is in the top, uh, so we need to keep it in the cart context itself. OK, so let's make it. Uh, Cart show is going to be initially I'm making it as false initial state is going to be false and in the reducer I'm going to say set set underscore cart underscore show is going to be set underscore cart underscore show and I'm going to copy this case one more time I'm going to paste it okay and I'm just going to say set cart show set cart show and I'm going to say cart show from here cart show and cart show okay so now it's looking good and if I am pressing F12 and if I'm going to component section over there and in the context provider values, if you expand the values, cart show is initially false. So what we need to do is we need to do that while we are main container. This it should be rendered only if there is a cart value. So cart underscore show S O W. So if that is the cart show and render this. OK, so we will check the cart show also simultaneously. Save the changes. 
now it will not display it over there so what i need to do is i need to go to the head header header and over here i need to get the cart show initial state cart show and get that value cart show and where is that cart icon yeah this is that division on click i'm going to call a function called show cart and then i'm going to create that function over here cards show cart is going to be okay so all we have to do copy this exactly over here and we just need to change the type to set or show as not part show whatever the value is we'll just set that value as opposite so change this to um cot show whatever the value of cot show it is set that value as a not cot show and we will call this function right at the bottom also because here also we having the uh shopping basket over here right on click see the changes i hope it might fix the issue now if i click this it's coming up so now when i click this it's need to go out so let's go to the cart container and here let me from the header i'm just going to copy this line and i'm going to paste it and i don't need this user information and i'm going to copy the same method actually it's it's looking like repeated but if you are keeping it in the top level it will throws the error so i try to keep this in the util function and i try to access it but it shows me that error like uh, context that the, the provider value the function it's not supposed to be at the top level of the component so if it is showing it that if you're keeping it at the top level it's showing an error because already it's in the top level only so every time we need to do that same thing only so but it's working fine so i'll i also leave it as it is okay so here uh, this is where we are clicking so no not this back option where at the back uh i think this is on click show cart save change okay so action type and all those things okay say import it import it now it gets imported now if i click it it will comes in if i click it it will goes out but we need to do something creative right so what we need to do is let's import the we already imported the motion and we'll wrap it with motion dot div and here also motion dot div and then i'm going to say initially initial stage of it it's going to be opacity 0 colon 0 and x value it's going to be 200 something i'm going to copy this paste it and save it it will throws an error no issue will change it animate from the initial stage to animate and while exit also move it in the same way but while animating opacity should be 1 and x should be 0 so now if i am bringing it it looks like this if it is going out it's looking fine that's absolutely looking fine right but it's coming very slow why i think somewhere i added the transition transition for this button yep so now this will solves that issue okay so like this this is looking much now much faster okay so now our we successfully integrated our show card detail even if you are refreshing it that card will be move back to the same state because initial state is updated in the while refreshing your page so it's getting updated 
okay so that's looking absolutely fine now and now what we need to do is uh, i need to create an cart item also whenever i'm clicking this it's need to add the cart item over there and i need to update this uh, number two also so let's go ahead and do that now and that's what we are going to do next okay then so now what we need to do is we have to go to the initial state again in the initial state i'm just going to define the cart items okay so uh, we are going to set the cart item in the uh, local storage because every time when the user logged in and if he refreshed it's need to be uh, still should show that cart details and everything so what we have to do is in the initial state uh, i'm going to open the local storage function where it is fetch local storage function and here i'm going to say it, copy this method okay and paste it just i just created fetch cart and instead of user cart items cart items that's it nothing else and then cart info okay so we are trying to fetch this information from the local and at the initial state of it initial state while initializing i'm just going to fetch cost cart info is going to be fetch cart fetch that cart value and then say cart items colon cart info we're trying to fetch it if it is not there it will initialize this null save the changes and let's go to the reducer now in the reducer section what you need to do is where is the reducer go back to the reducer and i need to create one more thing set cart items colon set cart items this is the value we are setting copy it and paste it better cart items cart items and copy it from here and paste it okay for cart items just like that we are going to uh, just like fruit items food items cart items it's going to be same copy this and replace the name and initial state cart items replace this just like this so now if you go and verify your context provider that should be updated properly otherwise it will show us any issues now cart items it's empty and yeah so cart items it's successfully created it's currently it's, it's empty now okay so now all i need to do is let me go back to the header component in the header component what i need to do is for the cart items if there is no cart items we need to update the user a uh, cart basket we need to update that cart basket okay so just a moment where it is okay so let's go to our um where it is where it is where it is header section so now we don't need to worry about this reducer and we don't need about this and this and let's go to the header now okay so let's get the cart items so what is that name copy this name and then paste it here cart items so where we need to check is we need to check these for this division this division needs to be rendered only if there is cart items and the cart items dot length l e n g g hat if the length is greater than zero then only it is supposed to render this information inside here all i'm going to say cart items dot length so by that way it will display that cart items length okay so now copy this we need to update it in our another basket division because we having two baskets over here also this division copy it and paste it save the changes and now you can see that that cart is empty over there now all we have to do let's go back to our row container and whenever user um, clicks that icon clicks that item 
it's need to be updated it's need to push that information to our cart that's what we need to do now and now let's do that one okay so let's go there and when the user clicks that option when the user clicks that option add to cart and wait a second mm, what we have to do is uh, uh, um, I just need to push this information to cart items right so uh, what we can do is I will and in the same way we need to keep this cart item information in the local storage also we need to do two different things and while initializing um, where we can keep that information is what I'm trying to say is when the user clicks this clicks this that's need to be added to our basket and as well as that's need to be pushed to our local storage also if I inspect this element if I go to the app application just like having the user information we need to keep it in our um, we need to keep our um, uh, what is that we need to keep our um, cart information also that's why the, that's how we can fetch that information whenever we needed that uh, information even if the pages get refreshed we if the user is logged in he can able to collect that cart information whatever the information he uh, the items whatever he added so far over there okay so let's need to do that so what we need to do is that's why i'm thinking for that um where we can keep it if we keep it over here um, what will happen um mm, mm, mm. if we keep it over here we'll get the cart and we will destructure it and they will push it back okay we'll give a try if it is not working we'll see trial and error trial and error learn from mistakes okay so i'm going to get the cart now so const cart items comma dispatch is equals use state value say the changes okay and what i'm going to do is on click where it is that cart option over here for this i'm going to add on click event on click add to cart method okay so here we'll create that method again const add to cart is equals render it so um then what we have to do is we just need to send the item over here we need to receive the item whenever i'm sending the basket option whereas here i'll call it as a callback function and we will paste it and we will send that item inside we'll send that item inside completely and let's see what we got over here console.log item save it changes and let's go to the browser inspect the elements console object okay it's loaded food items where is this food item somewhere we are printing the food items where main container now then menu container somewhere we are printing the object where it's getting printed 
maybe it's from this yeah it's it's from that only okay so now it's fine so what we have to do is um we need to check this right so let me push it in the right side of the browser so that we can see it side by side over here and now if i click this we are getting the items if i click this we are getting another item also so everything we are getting over here all we have to do we just need to dispatch this to our cart items so close this and let's go back to our row container and over here instead of doing this i'm just going to say dispatch that type dispatch the type is going to be uh, action type dot set cart items it's going to be cart items colon and whatever the cart items we are getting we need to destructure it first we need to destructure it so we'll send it as an array itself we will destructure that cart item and we will send the new updated item to it so that means we are breaking the cart items over here after that we are appending our new item to that particular array and that this array will be assigned to our cart items let's verify whether it is working fine or not components let's go to the our main context provider state context currently cart items is zero if i'm clicking it look at that it's added we're having one more array inside it and if i'm clicking it we added we're having two more arrays it's constantly adding the cart informations but the problem is now if you look at it if you refresh it just like i said the values everything will be done that cart completely cleared so that's not supposed to happen so to prevent it what we need to do is once the cart items is successfully done whenever you are changing the thing so we just need to save this information to our um local storage so call local storage dot set item local storage dot set item in the name of cart items and we are going to send it as a array whatever the items we having we are sending it to our cart items okay so this will be dispatched and it will be updated instantly i hope so now let's go to our application let's have a look at it over here if i click it if i click again so every single time when i'm clicking second time only it's getting updated right because initially um, initially our uh, cart items value is it's zero so every time when i'm clicking again so but it's updating in our cart but it's not fetching dynamically so what what is the problem is uh, what we can do is we can create a new state to monitor that okay so use state snippet items set items is going to be an empty item we'll create an empty item okay and i'm just going to say um we will get the set items so what we can do is we'll do this in our set items of cart items dot item then we will pass that items over here and we will save that items over here in the location let's see you state is not defined now say the changes and now let me clear the browser cart items okay now if i am refreshing it's done and if i'm clicking it here still it's a dummy detail only if i click it 
one, two. Only when a second time only it's getting updated. Why? Three. I need to click two times. Why it's happening? If I'm clicking two times, the cart value is getting updated. Why? So use effect. So this use effect will monitor the item value. Items value. Okay, and then I will call this method add to cart method over here, and I will set this to our basket. over here let's see what's happening right now currently let me delete this cart item is completely empty now if i click this one if i click this two look at that so now it's dynamically getting updated actually what i did is i keep it as a separate function add to cart as a separate function okay and um, we don't need this item over here delete it and i created a separate state i will push the details everything to the state whenever the state is changed we are calling this add to cart method inside that use effect method so if this changed this method will re render so it will dispatch and it will update the local storage too so that's what happening exactly over here so we having three details and here we are having the count also as three so cart is now looking absolutely clear so let's go back to our cart container and we will render that information which is coming from our cart let's bring our cart items here cart items that is the initial name right cart items it's having that cart items and now where is that cart item section and this is the each and every cart item over here okay so let's cut it and let's re-render it if the cart items and if the cart items dot length how oh, i displayed the cart one second. Hmm. So wait a second here cart items and cart items dot map we will map each every item into it and dynamically render our division inside it and we'll pass the key as cart sorry that item dot id itself and let's bring that one by one information we'll need to bring the calories and where we are displaying the calories we are not displaying the calories over here we need the name so that is going to be titles instead of this we need to render item title and we need to bring the price and instead of this price item question mark dot 
price later we need to do some changes for this price and all those things and we need the quantity also so what is the quantity and item dot quantity item dot quantity so anyway i'm not going to display the item dot quantity from here i will display it in a different way well, first let's bring all the details into inside here then we will display the we will do start the work instead of hard coding this image we will fetch the image url and we will display that image url over there save the changes and now if i click the cart and that will display the updated cart item informations over here so this is successfully done and now all we have to do is just to display uh, their price and quantities when, uh, when I'm clicking and updating over here. That's what we are going to do next. What we have to do is and where it is, where it is, where it is, that price add the dollar sign over here. So that will display the dollar sign. And we need to do one more thing. If this cart items is not there, if the empty, if that cart is completely empty, it will display an empty cart. We need to display something else different. So what I'm going to do is, this is the bottom section. It's getting rendered right after here. If that is cart items and cart items, absolutely that will be the cart items because it's an empty cart. So empty array. So if only if the length L E N G T H if the length is greater than zero, then render this division inside here. Else render the component. Else we have to render this particular division. A division with the width full flex flex column item center justify center gap six and we need to load the empty card which i'm having in the image and let's load that empty card image empty card svg if i go up i'm having that empty card svg over there say the changes nothing but if i'm clearing this and if i refresh this it will be nothing over there if i click this and now it will display this add cart items option and we need to do one more thing now let's see if i click this it's changing but if the user is not there we need to we are not supposed to display the checkout option if the user is not there we need to display something else so uh, where is our cart and uh, this is the button we are showing right instead of this oh no not this one checkout where is checkout button uh, open here we having the button at the bottom like checkout what I'm going to say is I'm going to fetch the user information also if the user is null in the cart context I'm not supposed to show this That's it. so we are supposed to say um what we can need to do if the user only if that is the user render it otherwise don't render it user can't check it out he can simply see the cart and all those things otherwise we need to display simply what we can say is we can say we'll copy this button once again and we'll say login check in case if there is no user it will show this button option over there currently that is user that's why it's showing this if i close it back it's going back so next all we have to do this functionality we need to update the price and quantity details and all over here and that's it that what we are going to do next okay then so now let's uh, update this uh, item values and everything so go here and actually what's the problem is we rendered this as uh, inside our same uh, cart container component itself so if you are applying any state for monitoring your quantity it will not work fine because our state needs to work separate for each and every child but if you are setting it over here it will work for the entire child as a single state so that will not work fine 
So what we need to do is we need to push all this. Uh, we need to, I'll just copy this. This is where the cart item is finishing, right? So I'll keep it as a separate component, cut it. And let me create a new component called cart item dot asx rafc let me paste it over here and in the cart container i'm just going to say and in the index also we need to add so let me add cart item cart item then cart item okay so here let's say the changes over here and let's bring all the files whatever we needed for that this one cut it and paste it over here and we need the item for it item and we need this key over where is the cart item is getting rendered over here we need that key over here and that, that we will supply the data to it and that data is going to be our item and we will destructure that okay item item itself we'll send the item as an item itself and we inside we can use that item so bi plus apart from that everything is using an import motion okay so save the changes save the changes so cart item is not defined absolutely we not yet defined over here Save the changes and now currently cart is empty if you are adding anything else cart will get added and it's getting updated if i click this it's adding so cart is now getting updated so now what i need to do is inside this cart item i'm going to create a state use state called qty and set the quantity initially as one okay initially the cart quantity we are going to set it as one only and whenever i'm clicking the so here instead of item quantity i'm going to set our own quantity and instead of price details over there uh, for that price details what i'm going to say is i'm just going to say this items um item dot price star one if i save it what's happening you state it's not defined save it okay it's there and It's working fine so if i'm updating the quantity to two still it's remaining the same actually the price needs to be updated now already the price of it is 15 only it need to be updated now but it's not updating because it's a string so let's say parts fold float and pass that value now it will update that value so if i am clicking this 12 why 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 oh my bad qty it's a mistake so now it's getting updated if i'm adding this item over here 8.5 and it's getting updated as uh qty because we initially hard coded is as two that's why it's showing like that okay so let me now see so you can see that the state value and the price everything is changing according to that now now what i need to do is i'm going to create a, a method okay on click i'm going to call a method and where i'm going to call i'm going to call those both methods over here update the cart on click and this is going to be add and i'm going to pass an action also add and remove and i'm passing the item id to it save the changes and we will create this function this function is not there so const update quantity is equals open it okay 
so what i'm going to do is inside this if if the action what i'm sending if i'm receiving the action over here because if the action is equals equals to add the action is equals to add then we will set the quantity as set quantity as quantity plus one and then also i need to do one more information that is we'll get the cart item we'll get this paste it here we need only cart item we need only cart item so we need to map through each and every element inside the cart item and i'm going to update the quantity also so cart items dot map every single element item and we are receiving the id also because while calling that method i'm sending id and the add method and that is will be passed over here and so what i'm going to do is if i'm going to check one more condition if item if item uh, uh, what we can say is if item dot id is equals to the current id what we are receiving then then um you can say item dot quantity plus equals one so we can't write it we need we need we need come on think with trick so here let's okay let's write an if condition over here if item dot id is equals to id then do item dot quantity plus equals one say the changes if it should not show any error okay it's not showing any error now then what we need to do is and we need to update this information to our card because we change the cart right now so we need to dispatch it so for that i'm going to create a new method called card dispatch in the same way i'm going to update it in the local um in the local <laughs> come on what we need to do what we need to do what we need to do so so we need to update the cart items in the context provider and as well as in the local storage so here um what this what i can say is i'm going to say i'm going to create an use state snippet uh items set items an empty array and i'm going to create an use effect to monitor that use state snippet so not use state snippet use effect open it this is to monitor that items whenever that items has got changed that item got changed then what we need to do is and items is equals cart items we are getting that cart items back and we are updating it over here okay and when whenever there is a changes in the quantity if there is any changes in the quantity if there is any changes in the quantity get the cart items and assign it to the items and that will be assigned back to our cart items okay so cart items and then right like next now what we need to do is i'm just going to 
after here i'm going to call that call dispatch method okay so save the changes let's see whether it is working fine or not action type where it is action type save changes so we are getting some error console assignment to constant variable oops so it's set items of the structure the item now we need to replace the item completely so part items i think this will work we'll see open it empty cart now add few products over here it's okay let's go back to the application we having it quantity is currently one if i'm clicking it there is a changes in the quantity over here and it's updating over here and if i'm going to components context provider value array cart items and the quantity over here so look at that so everything is working fine absolutely fine so our local storage is also get updated and our cart items also it's getting updated so this method now whatever we did it's done it's absolutely working fine okay so it's getting updated instantly next what we need to do is if it is not i need to remove it right else that's what we are going to do uh, but if the quantity value is equals to one if the quantity value is equals to one and if the user is again trying to remove it okay again if the user press uh, trying to remove it we need to pop that element so if the quantity is equals to one then we need to chop out that id from that okay so we need to set items is equals we need to remove that id and we need to set that id over there okay we are filtering it we are filtering and each and every items inside it we are except that particular id we are getting the other remaining items and everything and i am setting it to items okay and i am setting that thing to items fine okay so after that next what we here what we need to do is and uh, we need to say we need to dispatch the informations to our we are removing it and we are dispatching it otherwise only we are updating the quantity again set quantity to minus one and then just like the same steps what we are going to do we are just going to copy it from here copy this completely from here paste it instead of plus here i'm going to say minus one and i'm going to dispatch that information so save the changes and i hope it will work fine if i click this it's changing and this is not getting updated application here it's changing but in the components the quantity it's not getting dispatched why 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 okay guys so after a long time of struggle i figured out finally what is the mistake so the mistake we made is i just instead of setting it to cart items i set it to cart only this particular mistakes it's because of that particular mistake is what's entirely uh, messed up okay so now it's completely working fine if i click this it's just you can add it and you can the, see the total price and everything is updated i added few changes over here i will show you what i made if i'm clicking it it will change if i'm clicking this it will completely removed and it will shows the uh, empty cart and as well okay so and one of the things i made changes is so i click the update quantity if the user clicks add when the, when the action is add we are setting the quantity which is 
and the quantity value set quantity is a state value initially we are setting the state value of the item quantity what we are receiving from the uh, from the cart items okay we are setting it to initially we set it to one and i changed it to items dot quantity okay after that we are mapping it and we are changing the quantity one by one and i am just dispatching it every single time whenever there is a quantity change i am just dispatching the new items to our cart items our uh, our uh, main uh, uh, contacts provider and if this quantity is equals to one and then that mean that means we need to remove that id from our cart item so i'm just filtering out if that i filter will returns a new array it will returns all the id except that particular id details okay so then we are dispatching that information also and as well as we are adding the quantity we are adding the quantity also if the red if the if the quantity is not equals to one we need to remove we need to reduce it so we are reducing it and here i'm setting the flag value so why because whenever the quantity is gets updated here it's need to calculate the total so i'm finding the total over here so how i'm finding the total this is the function i'm using reduce function so from the cart item i'm reducing the value i'm it's calling a function and i'm getting the value okay and i'm getting the item initially the accumulator value will be zero and we are getting the quantity and the price and we are simply adding it with that particular value so this is how you can find the sum from an uh, array of elements okay so reduce is the method which comes uh, with the javascript and i'm calling a function accumulator and item we are passing the item of the cart items and the accumulator accumulator initial is nothing but zero and zero plus the item of quantity and the price multiplied then it will be added to the accumulator itself and that final result will be returned to our total price initially whenever the cart items it's getting changed this flag item is getting changed this use items will refresh so that i will get the current total price and then i'm getting i'm setting that total price to the state and i'm getting that state values over where is that we are getting that state value over here simply delivery charge will be added plus 2.5 and the total will be simply printed over here okay so these are the changes we made so far and it's completely working fine if i click this it gets added over here if i click this it will be updated up if i remove it that will be removed it will be empty again if i'm adding if i'm adding multiple elements that will get added if i click this that element itself is updating separately total is calculating fine if you remove it total will be updated if you remove it that element will be removed completely and still the total is remaining the same if i'm removing this one also that is completely removed so finally we successfully created our food delivery application and even if you wish to add some footer and all those things you can add it but i'm just going to leave it as it is and this is it for this course and if you enjoy it just comment it below